This video contains subject matter that may be offensive and disturbing to some people. If you are the type to require a warning throughout a video or show, let this message serve as your warning. This channel discusses the harsh reality of true crime. If this warning is not sufficient for you, consider a different genre and unsubscribe from my channel immediately. Everybody, Freakazoid! Yeah. Yeah, so this is a case that we've actually talked about before. And I'm going to go over it again. Uh, because one of the family members actually left me a message on my Skype account from a week ago. And then I called them up and interviewed them. But I want to go over the case again and then listen to the interview. And then I think, uh, here, well, let me, let me do this right now before I forget. I'm going to set up a community post so that you can ask a question regarding it. And then I can call her back up and ask those questions. So hold on. All right, so this is uh, questions for Alex. Uh, Zuban. Sister of Kate Brown. All right, so I'm just going to make this for channel members only. Uh, uh, all channel members. I don't like when trolls just show up and type some bullshit in about something totally unrelated because their brains are myopic and they can only talk about one thing over and over and over again. Yeah. All right. How's everybody doing? Sounds like uh, Chasing Truth's kids are, um, they both have COVID now. Her husband has it, and she's just kind of waiting around, trying to see what's going to happen. If she doesn't feel sick or anything, we might be doing our first show, like, at 11 my time tomorrow. So, people in Australia, that's too early for you. <laughs> it's just on that other channel for, like, an hour or something. But I, I, that's, that's what I'm going to be doing it, because I'm still going to be doing my regular shows. I'm not going to have it. I'm not too bad, not too bad. I don't know if they were or not. Uh, what was interesting, remember I told you guys that I was going to call the... Uh, I tried calling Rhonda Jones' mom off of last night's topic. She didn't answer, so I called the sister and we talked for, God, I don't know, 45 minutes. There's some interesting information that she gave me, but I can't... Or on one person that they're... That she just found out about or something, so... That's kind of interesting. Uh, but one thing she told me it was weird is she's had COVID three times. Can you believe that? I mean, it, she apparently has immune comprom you know, compromise because of some sort of like a cancer treatment. And so she's had it three times. It made it through all three of them. Pretty, pretty crazy, huh? Yeah. Yeah, so even getting... It didn't uh, create any sort of immunity for her, basically. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe she doesn't want her actual name out there, Janine. You ever thought of that?
Mm, I don't know if we're all going to get it. Yeah. I'm hoping they just get rid of, get rid of it. Man, it, it must be so easy to catch at this point. I mean, she read off this list of like 20 people. But I guess they were all at this one event. Yeah, and by the way, if you're out there... No, you don't, you're not a loser if you hit the down arrow. Thank you. The down arrow helps my channel. It doesn't mean anything to Google. YouTube, they don't give a shit. If you had 700 dislikes and 700 likes, or 300 likes and 400 dislikes, it's still 700 engagements. That's all they care about. How do you like that? So go ahead. Make my day. Yeah, so in the interview that I did, I, you know, I cut out a bunch of it. My brain was a little bit like jelly for some reason. Mumbling around. Yeah, it's six times more contagious, yeah. But one thing I heard today that didn't sound that great was that the study that they came out with is that Pfizer is only 43% effective from preventing you from getting COVID where Moderna is 71%. That's a pretty big difference. Something like that. Yeah. All right, anyways, I'm going to... So that's why I want the booster right away. Just boom, just load me up with that shit, you know? <laughs> Uh, well, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Thought criminal. Yeah, yeah, no. You're, that just means you're not really informed. All right, so let me go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and um, start right, right off here. Man, yeah, not really. Thought criminal. Sorry. You're a criminal of thought. Is what, what you should switch that around. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, I want the booster. Just boom. Uh, all the numbers show you that the vaccine helps tremendously from preventing severe disease or going to the hospital. So, unfortunately, you're misinformed. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Well, the, the booster is the one that's going to work. Yeah. More. Because it's, it makes it like ten times more antibodies that you have in there. Yeah, well, do what you, do what you want, Dr. criminal. I don't need to hear your opinion, though. I'm just telling you mine. Okay, so I'm going to get on to the, the case now, okay? Yeah. All right, here we go. You ready, Jennifer, to get going on this? I don't know what you're talking about. Just I'm going to put you on timeout so you can clear your head. All right, so this is way back. Uh, this happened in 2019, so it's not that long ago. Parents of homicide victim Carnell Sledge did not know woman, the woman who was killed with him. Okay, uh, so here we go. The parents of Carnell Sledge, the 40-year-old man shot dead in Cleveland Metro Park's Rocky River Reservation Tuesday, did not know the 33-year-old woman who was killed along with him. This is really kind of a bizarre story here. That's according to Beverly Perry, a cousin of Sledge's grandmother. Uh, Perry told Cleveland.com Thursday that police went to the home of Carl and Darlene Sledge. Those are the parents of Carnell Sledge. He goes by Nell, apparently in Bedford at 2 a.m. Wednesday to notify them of their son's death. Perry said detectives showed Carl Sledge a picture of Catherine Brown, 33, of Fairview Park, but he didn't recognize her. So he, they didn't recognize the person that was killed with him. No one knew her, Perry said. The parents lived in Bedford, where Carnell Sledge grew up and went to Bedford High School, Perry said. 
Perry said Carnell Sledge was not married and did not have any children. So that, that's, uh, Carnell, just to let you know, Carnell Sledge is a black man. He's pretty big. And um, Kate is, um, let me, hold on, let me get my figures here. Yeah, Kate Brown is a white woman, okay? So apparently that's, you'll hear in the interview later, that's why the FBI jumped in early because they weren't sure if it was a hate crime or what was going on there. Okay, Keith Callie, who is in charge of human resources and finance at Crescent Digital, recalled speaking with Sledge in the middle of the day on Tuesday about an expense report and that he demonstrated no unusual behavior. Callie Sledge, who was an audiovisual technician, would have left work that day between 4 and 5. Sledge's body and that of Catherine Brown, 33, reportedly found. Let me see what that says. Crescent Digital. Let me see where that is. Since that popped up in the article. Oh, there you go. Right there. Okay. Sledge's body and that of Catherine Brown or Kate, 33, were reportedly found at 5.22 p.m. in Cleveland Metro Park's Rocky River Reservation. Currently, we believe this to be an isolated incident and overall the safety of the park is not in question. And let's see. Callie and Sledge were, was a, uh, Callie said Sledge was a good employee who was always punctual and that everybody liked. Crescent Digital, which installs audio-visual equipment, has been in business since 2001. Sledge LinkedIn page. Wow, thank you, Brandy. <laughs> Man, you're so kind. Got a bunch of, we have a lot of really kind freaks here that yeah, keep the cogs of the channel going and allow us to Donate so much money to charities at the during and at the end of each month. Oh, see, there he goes. Thank you. <laughs> Very cool. Hey, there's Lori Fisher. How's it going? Yeah, very cool, very cool. Thank you. Oh, by the way, I bought one of those one time. This thing right here, it's it's crazy. This uh, it's a Zoom audio. It actually takes XLR connections, and you can record four different mics at one time, just out in the you know out in the middle of nowhere, as long as it's battery powered. Okay, Sledge's body and that of Kate Brown, 33, were reportedly found at 5.22 p.m. in Cleveland Metro Park, Rocky River Reservation. They think it's an isolated event. Um, let's see. Sledge's LinkedIn pages said he has worked as a transportation coordinator and youth consultant at Applewood Center from September 2002 until the present. Callie said he understood Sledge to be a volunteer at Applewood a nonprofit that provides mental health services to children and adults. I mean, he's a really cool dude, this guy. Sledge also has been special education specialist in the Westlake School District from September 2013 to 2018. Callie said a hospice specialist I was a Crescent Digital, lo uh, let's see, at Crescent Digital, located at East 30th Street and Euclid Avenue. Let me see if that's what I got here. Euclid, yeah, that's good, yeah, and that's 30th, 32nd, Euclid, yeah, there, that's it, okay, <clears throat> so we got that one, and then we can move on to the next one, FBI emphasis brazen nature of Rocky River murder, I mean, it was really, it's really crazy what happened here, these two people, friends, they met at a park, and they were both shot in the head. One of them was shot near the bench 
that they were sitting on, and the other one almost tried to run towards the river, and that's Kate. And she was shot, too, from behind. Uh, the FBI and Metro Parks officials are asking once again for the public's assistance in the Rocky River Reservation double homicide. In a press conference on Monday afternoon, Metro Parks Chief Ranger Catherine Dolan and FBI Specialist Agent in Charge Eric Smith followed up on the FBI's offer of $20,000 reward information with a public plea to anyone who knows anything about the June 4th killing of Carnell Sledge and Catherine Brown. This is 2019 now. Sledge 40 and Brown 33 were found at about 5.22 p.m. on June 4th. Here, I'll show you what they look like. It's in the uh, thumbnail, but this is them right here. They're just buddies. Cleveland Metro Parks Police, this is Carla. Hi, uh, I'm on Valley Parkway and there's two bodies here. And it looks like there's two bodies that were shot. Both these people are definitely dead. Police video never seen before. The moment Cleveland Metro Parks officers raced to wow, a call for two that. people shot in the Rocky River Reservation, June one. 2019. The Kate bed. Brown and Carnell Sledge murdered, a killer never caught. So the I team breaking new ground in the mystery. 136 radio. We got one in the water, face down, the other one by the fence. Our hearts dropped. Wow, in the water, face down. Huh? I got chills. I I cried. We don't see a weapon. We don't see a weapon or anything. So this whole area is going to have to be searched. And I want people to know that the, the last two years of this ha have been torture for our family. Been absolute torture. Families of the victims desperate for answers, so we investigated. Look at all the traffic in the park at the time of the crime, 5 p.m. And look at the parking lot by the scene. How did no one see anything or hear yeah, anything? That's crazy. The police video shows people casually walking dogs. Police took statements from kayakers and a nurse, and one man claiming he'd been sitting there doing paperwork. They're good. Everyone else, nobody needs anything. We go places. Oh, that's that's places, the person I interviewed. Every face I see, I think to myself, it could be you. You that's could her. have done this. I want to know the steps that are being taken to find out what happened, who did this, and why. What can we tell the public today that's different from before to help the public solve this case? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there. It there is no new information. The Metro Parks Police say they've done nearly 200 interviews investigating, but the police have released almost nothing about what they have on the case. Kate and Carnell, not lovers, just good friends. By all accounts, good people. They met at the park that day and ended up dead. A report shows police recovered three shell casings from the water, but the report says nothing else about that evidence. And even for this story, the Metro Parks saying little more than police need tips. What motives have been ruled out? Robbery, gang initiation, hate crime? At this point, nothing's ruled out. We don't know what happened yeah. here. I think what we're hoping to accomplish is to put together a visual reconstruction, a forensic animation. This is a 3D CGI model. Meet Scott Roeder hey, from right. the Evidence Room, a Northeast Ohio man. He's earned national recognition, reconstructing crime scenes, and creating animations of what happened. I can do Roeder that. has taken an interest in this case, reviewing the autopsy report, police report, visiting the scene of the crime, speaking to families of the victims, and more. Hoping to spark justice, he's got one of those Roeder program, spent yeah. hours of his own time working for nothing in return, generating a startling animation of how the crime may have happened based on the evidence. Carnell shot sitting on a bench. Kate shot near the water, uh, perhaps trying to get away. Right. Both families wanted you to see the animation, hoping it might shake loose a tip wow, to crack the sweet. case. Nice. Sometimes the suspect isn't always the big bad guy at the corner, but it's just a person who lost control. We huh. know that the male I didn't even, was shot I didn't twice, have this link. most probably I while he was sitting on the park bench. Yeah. We know that the female was shot once, also. Yeah, I think they were, what my opinion is, is they were both sitting on the park bench talking. The male was shot. She jumped up and ran and then was shot 
as well. They weren't in those positions that they have it in this in that animation. From the rear, and she was found half on the water, half off the water. She may have floated a little bit down the river, maybe 10 to 20 feet. The I team also asking new questions about this anonymous letter. Months after the crime, someone wrote to us saying a woman committed the murders, describing her in great detail, saying she stood right here, had words with Carnell, then she started shooting. Soon as we got this letter, we turned it over to the FBI working with the Metro Parks. So whatever became of this? Had they determined this is somewhat legit, possibly legit, somebody just with a fantasy? The I don't know how she knew them or why she happened to be there that day. She parked out of, wow, so this is a, uh, a witness. Letter specifically has been looked in. Possibly oh, legit, on. somebody. I have seen something, uh, killers of Carnell. Hold on. Just with a fantasy. The letter specifically has. A woman committed the murders, describing her in great detail, saying she stood right here, had words with Carnell, then she started shooting. Soon as we got this letter, we turned it over to the FBI working with the Metro Parks. So whatever became of this? Had they determined this is somewhat legit, possibly legit? Some I've seen news reports that the killer or killers of Carnell Sledge and Cape Brown haven't been found. No suspects. I bet this is a psychic. Their killer was a woman. I don't know how she knew them or why she happened to be there that day. She parked out of sight, walked to the bench where... I mean, it's definitely possible it was a woman. Because it could be somebody that wants... is killing... The goal was to kill Carnell because, you know, maybe he was with another woman and she liked him or something. Bench where Carnell was sitting, Kate had walked closer to the water's edge to look at something. I don't, I don't believe that. So that matches the animation. She probably saw that. To best describe the woman is to take a Reba McIntyre from the Reba show. She best fits the... Somebody just with a fantasy. The letter specific. She be best fits the description of the woman. Give her the hair of Reba's daughter, Kyra. Put on her Spanish olive green. I don't know. Typically has been looked into. Oh, shit. Yeah. Sitting here, you and I. The letter specifically has been looked into. Oh, wow. So it go, keeps going on. Two talking of marriage. Don't believe this was the mother. I hit a snag. I thought I had a name, but something Carnell. It was a white man sitting at the bench with Drew Carey. Ah, yeah. Drew Carey. He was looking behind the bench at the woman, and he said, For God's sakes, Amy, put down the gun. But the more the woman... No, sitting here, you and I are... But the more the woman was talked to, the more agitated and ir irated she got talking and we're still looking for until she had had enough and shot Carnell for information yeah. huh I don't know if I believe that shit at all Scott Broder also went with Kate Brown's sisters to Metro Park Police Headquarters. Weeks ago, relatives finally got a look at some of Kate's belongings from the day she died. She'd just bought a new purse, had just been to the gym. Could any of this provide a clue? It's some people constant. worry about their grocery lists and their what they have to do, and this is, unfortunately, this is what we constantly think about. Totally unbelievable. Carnell had a plan to be at his grandma's for dinner and more to the mystery of how Carnell and Kate ended up at the Metro Parks that day at that time. Carnell had organized a family dinner for that hour. Grandma starts texting. Carnell, um, are you on your way? Carnell, the food's getting cold. Call wow. Grandma. Wow, so he's supposed to be home at five or something. Why would anyone want these people dead? Carnell worked with kids and loved to work out. I'm not just saying that because that's my son, but he was a great guy. He wasn't perfect but he was a great guy. 
and Kate. Listen to how she made a difference. She, she loved life. She loved animals. She loved cats, ferrets, dogs. Just adored her niece and nephews. She made them feel special, loved. I want to say thanks to, to Fox 8, thanks to you uh, and the I-Team for, for even putting this on. It might put the course of this investigation on track. Seems like it's been off track for a few years. I think they all think Families that. of the victims grateful for a fresh look at the mystery, hoping the police video, the crime scene animation, something might at last generate a tip that leads to an arrest. Both of them precious lives was lost that, that day and uh, you know, both families need to know what, what's going on. But there's more to it. I don't know what it is, so, but there's but more But look how to close the, the edge is here. So I think he was sitting there he got shot first, and she freaked out and went forward. And look at it, it's just like a foot and a half. You fall right in the water. It's not some kind of a, a jog down there. See that? It's right there. it's going to come out. For the right tip, police have a $100,000 reward out there. A killer still out there, too. Ed Gallick, Fox 8, I-Team. Well, that was a pretty good little uh, story there, Fox 8. Links in the description if you want to check that one out. Good stuff. Uh, let's see. I'm, I just, I miss her so much. Kim Brown, back at the place where her daughter was killed three months ago today. I wish we'd have answers. I just can't understand. I just can't understand how this could have happened. Tuesday, June 4th, around 5.15 in the evening, 33-year-old Kate Brown and... And yes, everybody, if you'd like to help out the channel, uh, there is a Super Chat button down there. There's also channel memberships. There's, well, watching the video, if there was monetization, would matter, because then, then there'd be ad revenue. Okay. 40-year-old friend Carnell Sledge, sitting on this park bench when they were shot in the heads. The killer vanished Thank without you, a Dean. trace Dean and has right. not been identified. We have no idea who did it. We have just no idea. And that's upsetting. That's horribly upset. Oh, happy uh, anniversary. I'm not sure. Oh, that must be Derek, yeah. So happy anniversary, you guys. Because Kate and Carnell aren't here now. As a result of this abrupt, violent act, I mean, and why? Kim says she believes Metro Park's police and the FBI are doing all they can as they actively investigate. It does pose new difficulties. Romantic face, heart, heart, two hearts. Oh yeah, and they make cool boxes. <laughs> DK Rack. Thanks, LM. So with each passing day, FBI Special Agent Vicki Anderson says detectives want to hear from anyone who was in the park that day or who has heard anything that may help. She says it's still unclear if the killer knew the victims. The people that were in their circles, you know, who were they talking to? Um, who did they last speak with? Their family, their friends, people online. The, we've run all those things. Uh, we continue to work those angles, but the stranger possibility still exists. The Metro Park says police have upped patrols in the area. Kate's family putting up signs pleading for tips as they await answers. This couldn't have happened totally in isolation. Somebody knows something. And I'm hoping somebody will step forward. So the Cleveland Division of the FBI, Cleveland Metropolitan Crime Stoppers, announced support of a contribution to the reward fund, a reward money for the unsolved double homicide committed on June 4, 2019. Catherine Kate Brown, 33, and Carnell Sledge, 40, were shot and killed shortly after 5 p.m. I mean, it's right in the middle of rush hour. I mean, it's pretty bizarre, right? On June 4, 2019, while sitting on a park bench at the pull-off lot north of Lorraine Road. So, I, I mean, I've got all this marked out. right here this is that parking area 
and you go down here unfortunately there's a bunch of people there on the street view uh, you know playing around at the park but that's the bench right there they were sitting on this bench right here and somebody came up from behind them and shot him they were sitting uh, Carnell was on the right and Kate was on the left and he got shot and then he fell over it looks like and then she probably tries to go get away by going into the water and get shot I mean it's weird too because the trajectory apparently of the bullet that hit her hit her in the back of the low base of the head and then lodged up by an eyebrow so an upward angle Pretty strange. Weak, uh, weak caliber gun, maybe a 25 or 22 caliber. And then, strangely, there was people. There was a guy parked right here during the entire time. He didn't even see it. I mean, how does that even happen? How many feet is that? Uh, let's see. It's only 127 feet away. I have, I have the answers, by the way. Just something you might have thought about. And just think about it. It's 5 o'clock, sunny day. There's people all over the place. And somebody, obviously they must have parked here or right on the side of the road or something, got out, shot them in the head, then they left. Nobody saw them. Nobody. Trying to figure out who killed Kate Brown and Carnell Sledge back on June 4th in the Rocky River Reservation. Now loved ones are helping to increase the reward for information to $100,000. Brandon Simmons updates us on the investigation. It's been eight months since the murders of Kate Brown and Carnell Sledge in the Rocky River Reservation of the Cleveland Metro Parks. The memorial at that location remains fresh as family members continue to plea for help. Our family's lives were changed forever the moment we were told our beloved Kate was brutally murdered. Kate's sister, Alex Zubon, spoke alongside her father, Tom Brown, today as they announced an increase to the reward for information that helps solve this Metro Parks murder mystery. As a family, we have raised an additional $70,000. This raises the total reward. Wow to $100,000 for information. Unfortunately, Metro Parks Rangers and well, the FBI so. acknowledge they don't have much to go on, but they remain relentless, promising to work the case as if it happened yesterday. Law enforcement will not rest until Kate and Carnell's killer is brought to justice. Meanwhile, Alex and Tom continue to praise the sister and daughter they miss so much. Kate was my best friend. We talked every day. I still call her and leave her voicemails. She was at the top of her game. She was enjoying life. She loved going down to the park. She would go down with her mom and play cards, sit on a blanket. and I, I can't believe we're standing here. Anyone with information wow. should call Crime Stoppers or Metro Parks Rangers, knowing they can help a family heal while remaining anonymous. Now, the Metro Parks will likely put up billboards sometime this month to help keep well, it's been nearly two years since two friends, Kate Brown and Carnell Sledge, were shot to death sitting on a bench in the Metro Park's Rocky River Reservation. The crime remains unsolved and something Brown's family doesn't want the public to forget. As Mark Namick reports, their efforts to ask for help were shut down by the Metro Parks. We have to come out here and do this again because the Metro Parks are unwilling to aid us in this call for help to the public. The signs were a fixture along the roadway for months after the murders. First asking joggers, bikers, and drivers if they saw anything. Later, the signs highlighted the $100,000 reward, most of it from the family. The Metro Parks took the signs down last April. These aren't signs for a five-year-old's birthday party. These aren't signs for a graduation party. These are signs that are down here trying to, to stir up tips, maybe that one lead that would lead 
to getting this solved. With leads gone cold and the anniversary of the murders approaching, the family printed new signs and placed them along the road last Tuesday. The Metro Parks immediately removed them. I didn't receive a call. In fact, you, you're the one that told me. This is the only power my family has in this investigation. The, the only way we can help are little things like this. If I were the Metro Parks, I'd have my own people making signs up, and Metro Park people and putting them down here to get this solved because yeah. this this can't go on. I'll you get just back can't to walk when away I, when and I can, turn when your when cheek like and it, pretend yeah. it's going to go away. Because let me tell you something, it's not going to go away. As long as we're still here, we'll, we're going to do everything we can to keep this in the public eye. We all need the help of the public to reach the conclusion, and the conclusion is going to be someone talks about this, someone spoke about it at a bar, in a bar, somebody talked or bragged about it to a buddy, and we need those people to come forward. The family of Kate Brown hopes the Metro Parks will reconsider and allow them to put the signs back. They say it's about more than just reminding people. Yeah, I remember that was kind of lame. This is from June this year. Look again at police racing to the scene the day someone shot and killed Carnell Sledge and Kate Brown. Look at the scene now. Police back at the Rocky River Reservation on the anniversary of the crime two years later. Still looking for tips to crack the case. We've shown you families of the victims can't understand no progress after two years. No results whatsoever. Yeah, so I got that one. There was a, uh, a press conference with FBI this time. One well, today marks one year since two people were murdered in the Rocky River Reservation as police continue to search for the gunman. Carnell Sledge and Catherine Brown were found shot to death near the Lorraine Road Bridge. So far, police have no suspects in the killings. The Brown family plans to put up new signs in the Metro Parks this morning with new reward information that leads to an arrest. All right, I got that. There's only one more link here, maybe two. I really didn't want to come down here today. Not, not on the day that this happened two years ago. It just, it's painful. With heavy hearts, family and friends gather for a vigil near the bench where Kate Brown and Carnell Sledge were gunned down in broad daylight. It's very tough to come here at this time of year. It's painful that this has gone on for so long that there's no clues, there's no, there's not much to go on. Except their unwavering determination, using the second anniversary to plead with the public again for help catching the killer. There's no doubt in my mind there are people that know who did this. Yeah, somebody has to know something. Because it happened on a night just like this, warm and sunny around five o'clock. There were a lot of people in the park that day. Here along busy Valley Parkway in the Rocky River Reservation. I know people are walking their dogs, they're here with their kids, they're going canoeing and going kayaking, bikers, everybody's here. So somebody saw. No tip, no information is too small. Tipsters can remain anonymous and receive a $100,000 reward while giving loved ones something priceless. And it's just heartbreaking not having any closure whatsoever. It makes it really hard to heal and move on. We can close this or, or, or get a handle on making an arrest and, and, and getting this put behind us. And finally be able to focus on how Kate and Carnell lived not how they yeah, died. They knew about it. Sledge's Helping Hands is a foundation that They're Carnell friends. Sledge started himself. And his goal was to help kids, local kids, and their families. It was that kind of guy that just wanted to help. She was really funny. She was unbelievably kind, very sensitive. She was just a love. Meet us here every year. We'll keep coming back. We cannot lose sight of what matters, and we need justice. Then what happened to the audio? Did it just go away? We cannot lose sight. Huh. That was weird. And here it is on June 4, 2019, at approximately 5 p.m., long time friends Carnell Sledge and Catherine Brown 
Arrived at the Rocky River Reservation. In Rocky River, Suzanne Stratford, Fox uh, 8 News. Where the hell's that playing from? Oh, that, uh, Suzanne. Uh, <clears throat> Reservation. Let's see. Brown arrived at the Rocky River Reservation, both of them did, in Fairview Park, Ohio. Both met at a pull off lot north of Lorraine Road Bridge. Sledge and Brown were shot in the head while sitting on a bench alongside the river. Sledge was 40 years old at the time of his death, and Brown was 33. Anybody have any information, you contact the FBI Cleveland Field Office at 216-622-6842. Okay. So then uh, today I interviewed the sister that we've seen on the news there. So yeah. and, I, and I just, you know, I got rid of all the hellos and all that stuff. So um, I'll start from the beginning what I know about Kate's whereabouts. Um, she had lost hold uh, about, I think, 2.30. Left she work. left and she went back. Sorry. Uh, can you, uh, it kind of muffled out. Did she, she left work? Is that oh, what Oh, sure. Said? She left work at around 2.30, yeah. And she drove back to her apartment complex, which was right above the park. It was right outside the Cleveland Metro Park Rocky River, Rocky River Reservation. And she worked out there's, you know, a sign-in sheet for the, her workout room at her gym. So she was signed in and then had signed out um, around, I think it was 3, no, I'm sorry, around 4.30. This is where she worked. And she was seen by someone in that area talking on her phone. She looked kind of upset. The person had said that she was arguing with someone. They checked the, her phone records, and she was on the phone with her, her friend Nell. Hmm. So in that amount of time... They had, Nell and Kate had decided to meet at the park, and that wasn't, you know, out of the ordinary or anything. Um, they hung out, you know, quite a bit. They'd been friends for ten over 10 years. So um, Nell was seen driving home, and his coworker followed him, and then all of a sudden Nell had gotten off the highway to go meet Kate in the park. So then he's also seen on a camera coming down to the park, so the t he didn't stop anywhere. The time had, you know matched up where he had gotten left work gotten off the highway then went down and met kate at the bench there were a couple cars in the pull-off lot where they had met there was a car parked there with a guy doing he was a roofer doing paperwork all the way on the right side of the lot if you can if you pull up a picture or google maps it you'll see the little parking lot i mean it can fit like six cars max Mm -hmm. So Nell, when Nell was there, Kate pulled up next to him. They both got up out of the car, and the roofer saw them get out of the car. Then they walked over to the bench, and this was right at about 5.08 is when the roofer had claimed that he had seen them get up out of the car, walk over to the bench, and then he didn't see anything else. Then two kayakers had pulled up within less than 10 minutes later, and they got out of the car just to check to see what the river looked like because you can't unload your kayaks there. They were just checking to see what it looked like because it had rained a lot. And that's when they saw Nell on the right side of the bench face down in the grass. And Yeah, so put your questions in the community section of my channel. I just I made a post, okay? And all I want is questions for the case, not, hey, here's what I think's going on. I, I don't want to hear it, okay? Kate was down on the bank of the river, face down in the water, and they had called the police. Yeah, almost like he was shot first, and then she ran to get away and was shot, right? Right, that's what's speculated, and they don't know for sure, I mean, because it was so close together, but the first, Noah was shot in the back of the head, it went down his neck at first, didn't kill him, because it was a very small caliber gun. Um... Then he was shot above his left ear, so when he probably had turned or, or fell, mm -hmm. they, were, they speculated that it was a quick shot, bang, bang, you know, and then however long it took Kate, they're not 100% sure with the trajectory of Kate, um, with the bullet, went in the lower part of her head and then had gone up and was lodged behind her... Um, I'm sorry, I just blanked. Um, it's okay. Behind her eyebrow. 
it was stuck stuck there so there was no like exit wound um so they suggest they were suggesting that she was either looking down at the river and okay. fell or she had jumped and was looking down looking, you know looking to catch her feet and was shot that way because it doesn't really make sense that the trajectory went up while getting shot from behind unless the person was short or just the way Kate's head was angled if she was looking down. Uh, interesting. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So then we had found out that they had found casings in the river. Um, I can't, I, I, that there's been so much, so much information flying around over the past two years. I think they had found three. So the so guy collected exactly them? Three he, sh- they collected the uh, shell casings and threw them in the river? I, I, they don't think that they threw them unless the person was using a revolver. I think that they had said, cause I don't know anything about ballistics, but they were assumed that they shot off since if the person was, cause they fly off to the right, if you think the right side of the gun, um, but the person was facing them, but was also, you know, on their, on the right hand side. So they're not a hundred percent sure how the casings got in the room. And they're not a hundred percent specific. I mean, you know how detectives are and open investigations where they didn't tell us specifically where these were found. They didn't say all were found in the river. They didn't say that they were all Mm. found together. Mm. You know, I haven't seen pictures or anything like that. They just had said that casings were found in the river. So you think it was like a 20? So I wonder why they, this animation, obviously, they have her standing there. They went by that letter. Doesn't it make more sense that she got up to get away? That he, she was sitting there, and he gets shot, and then she goes, oh, God, and tried to go that direction because it was away from him, and boom, gets shot. Again, shot. <sighs> Come on, LM. Man, I, I just got to keep doing the show, okay? 25 caliber, one of those really tiny guns that you can fit into your, like the palm of your hand. Yeah, that's, I think that he had said it's a 22. I think that they were 16, 22. Oh, 22, okay. But a, but a handgun. Yeah, handgun. Uh, it's yeah. just it's so wild because it's uh, right in the middle, you know, rush hour basically, and people yeah. are at the. I, I actually have it on Google Earth. I've had it for a while. That mm-hmm. it's kind of a rectangle shaped parking area. Per, yep. That's kind of perpendicularly aligned to the road, and then you've got a mm-hmm. bench that's not it's not far away at all. It's right there. It's like maybe a yeah. hundred feet. You know. Yeah. Exactly. And that's and it's a pretty open space, you know. It's not concealed with shrubs, or you know, it's not covered at all. You can see it from the road, both ways. So. And what was um, the what was the name of the what apartment complex? You said she lived. She lived in. Let me double check. So it's up at the top of if you're still on. um, Yeah, still there. It's up at the top of Worcester, and is that Lorraine? I'm trying to remember what the name of it was. Um, but it's right near the park, you're saying? Oh, yeah. It's like right... It, well, it's, uh, ironically, the police... Sta- the ranger station is right at the bottom of a hill right there, and Kate's apartment is right at the top of that hill. Hmm. Well, I should say was... was. Uh, let me look at it. Um, Fairview Village? No, maybe. Fairview Village apartment well let's say you're in the yeah, park that's that fairview village apartment okay let's do that okay and then what was the gym that she went to it's right at the apartment complex it's like if you i'm not sure if you can see it on google maps but there's like it's right in front of the pool it's like right there it's just like a little workout facility oh, okay so she worked lived there probably just walked over to the gym right yep Mm-hmm. and then people and that's oh, go ahead oh sorry um so they had they they had the evidence that she had signed in. She signed out of the gym. Unfortunately, there is a thirty minute discrepancy where she was on the phone with Nell, where Nell was making a commute to the park, where they don't know where she went. So they don't know if she was sitting in her car because she didn't go back into her apartment. They have cameras, and so they don't know if she was sitting in her car. They don't know if she went up to the. I don't know. What are you talking about? Who knows what the shooter looked like? Okay, who knows what the shooter looked like? Nobody said they thought the shooter was white. Who knows? Right. Yeah, station. They don't know. You know, about thirty minutes from four thirty to about four five oh eight. They don't know what she did. So they don't have her on camera driving like they they did. Uh, Nell, I guess you call him Carnell. No, um, since Nell was coming from, I'm trying to think of like the direction down 
Lorraine to, to the park. Kate had just gone down Worcester Road, down that hill into the park and made a left. Nell came down like a pretty busy street called Lorraine Road. And there's a traffic camera on Story in Lorraine that his his car license plate was caught at. Okay, so Lorraine, oh, Lorraine Road's that really big one. Then it goes over the bridge, right? But you can probably get mm-hmm. off of it. Yeah, that's... Okay. Yeah, and the, the bench was actually right below that bridge. Yeah, and then she was on Valley Parkway, maybe? Something like that? Yep, Valley Parkway. That's the, that's where, the in the park, that's the big road that goes all the way through the park. And that's probably what she drove on, basically, from her apartment yeah. almost. So doesn't it seem like it's a personal... I don't think she went... Uh, I think it was like the Wooster, Valley Parkway. She This is her route. And then took Valley Parkway Trail, just like this, because that would wind right under the bridge and go right to the, the place. He came in on the freeway here, so his route would be... What would be the quick, quickest one? Same thing, really. He probably would just drive down like this, and when then when, when it was near... Her apartment, he would take that same left and wind down. I don't know if there's a quicker way from here. Yeah, there's no way off of this. I guess he could... No, that doesn't work. So, Yeah, the quickest way for him would be to go over this bridge, drive around, take that same left, go around like that. But apparently when he was on the road here, he was seen on camera. I mean, obviously, somebody who knew them. This isn't some random person, right? Um, personally, I, I've been going back and forth with it. Just with, with the with talking with detectives for two years, you know, multiple times a week, talking with the FBI. Somebody, Detective Jacobs, was the first person on, you know, from the FBI on this case, and he he brought up something in the very beginning that talked about like he believed that this was a crime of passion. Just because a normal person that gauges, you know, the uh, the risk of a situation would think this is a horrible idea to do this, I'm going to get caught. But if a person is driven by hatred, passion, anything, they don't see they're they're myopic and they don't see mm-hmm. anything. But I have to do this right now. This is my only opportunity to kill this person, these people. So he, he from the beginning, I do have believed that it's been somebody that they know the problem with that ideology is that they were so spontaneous with meeting up like kate was the type of person where she she didn't like making plans she always like made excuses so earlier that day in her text messages nell was like hey like let's get together and she's like okay like i don't know what i'm doing yet but i'll let you know i might be going to al's house which is my house and granted, I had never even talked to her about coming over, but she she wanted an out. That was just Kate's personality. She she hated committing to things. So I think that it was so spontaneous that Nell called her after work and said, hey, let's meet up, that I don't know how anyone would know that they were there unless one of them was being stalked, followed, something like that. So she doesn't have any phone activity in that 37 minutes that's missing? That's the that's another problem too. Is that um, Kate um, didn't have her location services on because the type of you know Verizon plan she had it was one of those old school, you know I shouldn't say old school but it wasn't like unlimited data mm-hmm. so she was really careful about her data use so no she didn't have her location services even when they did like the detectives did the the Google um, what do they refer to the I mean, the FBI said, uh, she tells me that the FBI got involved because they weren't sure if it was a race-related issue at the beginning. I mean, it's, you know, it would have to be this opportunistic race-hating person who just happened to be sitting there and went, oh, my God, there's a, you know, a black person with a white person, and he got really angry and he shot him. I mean, the odds of that are so low, it's ridiculous. But I, I, we did get some information here that was pretty interesting later. Google, Google Geo Maps, mm-hmm. where it can like locate any cellular phone. They, it didn't even pick it, Kate's phone up when they did it around the bench. And then they had you know done a bigger area to catch every single cell phone that was um, in that area. But unfortunately, Kate's phone wasn't even picked up because she didn't have her location services on. 
How, how about uh, that phone was, calls dogs during the inter- time? <laughs> Hold on, my dog. Just, oh yeah. Blue's barking in the interview. Good job, Blue. I'm just the one to now. Um, it was actually like a couple, so like they have, they were talking after Kate was at the gym, and then t- probably deciding where they were going to meet up. So we called her again. I think there was like two or three calls, like, "Hey, like I'm, I'm coming down to the park. Where are we going to meet?" See, but one of the things that's interesting is I remember earlier she said that when they were talking. When she was talking on the phone outside, she seemed to be upset about something. So when they were meeting there, they're upset, but neither of them are the killer. So I guess that's sort of irrelevant unless she was talking to somebody else and was upset. Kate was like, all right, I'm leaving. You know, and this is all, you know, I'm speculating, but um, there was a couple calls between them, but then there was no other... Um, action on her phone messages or anything like that there were two calls but we don't you don't know where she was when those calls were made yeah. right correct and that's another thing is that the the cell phone pings i remember in the very beginning of the investigation they, they talked about the importance of cell phone pings and figuring out you know where she was that's how they were going to figure it out but the same tower that pings her at her, her apartment location pinged in the park because it was so close so there was no way to see like where her where she had traveled because it was pinging off the same tower. Because they're spontaneous, you're thinking that means that they're not that it possibly isn't a mm-hmm. heat of passion. Maybe it was somebody that was yeah. racist. No, that and that's the, the the whole reason the FBI was involved from the beginning because normally you know federal jurisdictions they don't come unless there's they have you know these parameters that they have to go through. But that was the original. The only reason why the FBI was involved is because from the get-go they thought it was a hate crime. Hmm. And then, what about any ex? I mean, ex-boyfriends that maybe Kate had that maybe were stalking. Mm-hmm. Is there anybody like that? A stalking level? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> Kate's ex-boyfriend. Um, la, la, la. They dated back. I want to say two thousand. 10 to 2015 but they were still hanging out kate was actually with him the night before this his mm. name's hassan okay hold on his name is hassan okay but hold on let me move it so his name is hassan and he was abusive um was just you know he was a really charismatic guy so you know that met the eye but he, he became was, my you know, number one interest at this I, I hated him um you know, uh, I, Kate would, you know, break down and tell me a couple of weeks after they'd hang out and say something like, oh, man, like, I was hanging out with Hassan again. And, you know, she was, you know, she was embarrassed about it. But it was kind of like, a, you know, he's a, he was a comfort thing for her. You know, she was lonely. And so um, they were together the night before. Um, the police interviewed him. Hmm. And, I don't, you know, I didn't tell me much about the interview. But... Um, he was seen coming into her apartment the night of Wednesday night around, oh yeah, I'm sorry, Monday night around 8, and then he left really early in the morning, like 3.30, I think. They saw him leave on the, on the cameras. Um, <clears throat> is, he mar- I, is he married or anything, that guy? No, I don't know if he has a girlfriend I did, or had a girlfriend at the time. Um, he wasn't, he isn't married, though. Hmm. But, uh... My, I had a friend, he had called me, you know, when he found out what happened, and he was hysterically crying. I couldn't even understand what he was saying. And meanwhile, dealing with the information, you know, I just found out Kate died. I just found out Nell was with him. This was at like 10 o'clock in the morning the day after. And um, <clears throat> I was just confused who I was even talking to at the time. And I remember thinking, like, why the hell did you just call me? Like, like why? Mm-hmm. And he admitted to me on the phone that he was with her the night before. And it all didn't really, like, click or anything. So then a week goes by, we're planning Kate's funeral, and I asked, you know, a friend of mine, my guy friend, to go over to Hassan's house and let him know respectfully, like, you're not welcome at the funeral. Um, And when my friend had gone over there, he saw a handgun on the table. And Hassan, he's described as, you know, erratic, throwing himself over furniture, upset, and, you know, just, like, just hysterical. Mm. So I had told the police all of this. I had given them my friend's phone number information, and the Metro Park detectives 
got, got in touch with him. I think this was about a month ago. They finally what? followed up on it and called my friend. Are and it took him a two, literally over two years to do that. To talk to the friend that went over to his house, right? That witness, yeah, that saw the gun, that saw his behavior, everything. Even though I had told them this, oh, my friend told me he called me like when he left his son's, all worried about it, saying there was a gun on the table. I got really uncomfortable. Blah blah blah. And I had called the police immediately to tell them that, and it took them two years to follow up on it. And I don't know if that's because they had their sights on someone else, and you know that Hassan had this, as as they say, airtight alibi. I, I don't know. I don't know the nitty gritty of why it took them that long and why they looped back to it um, two years later. I, I don't know. That's wild. So he has a he does have an airtight alibi, or I don't know that I, that was that was they didn't say the only alibi I ever heard about was this guy that Kate was dating, um, Brandon Trice, who was seen clocking out at you know five oh five in Euclid. That was the of, of everybody other you know person of interest they won't even say suspect p- person of interest that's the only um um alibi that they were specific with me about hmm so she was dating that was her boyfriend this other that guy the, and then Hassan has Hassan was just a fling that she was with again yeah. right okay yeah, she kind of, well, that was, well, Kate had lost a bunch of weight, so I'll, I'll give you, like, the, the back story about it. Kate was, um, had a drinking problem, suffered from depression, leading up to her sobriety about two years before this happened. She decided to get sober, and she started losing a bunch of weight. You know, she wasn't dating anybody. She was like a total recluse. Um, and then when she lost all this weight, gained her confidence back, she started dating a bunch of people again. She, you know, was on Tinder. She met a few guys on Tinder. She was dating Brandon. You know, they were hanging out. I can't even say, you know, like these days, like you hang out. You don't really like seriously date anybody. So she was hanging out with Brandon. She was seeing Hassan from time to time. Um, And then there was like a couple other guys, you know, sprinkled in there that she had met on Tinder that, you know, she was just, you know, playing, playing the field. Yeah. Well, when guys do that, nobody cares, right? So, I think it's just, exactly right. Yeah. What was the relationship with uh, Carnell though? Were they dating too sometimes, or? No, they were strictly friends. Kate met him back when um, I think Kate was about twenty-one. Met him out at a, a, a bar, a club, like a local one. Uh, back when Kate was like twenty-one, and you know, and then uh, no, they never. Um, dated or anything like that Kate like Kate really like appreciated their friendship and so they kind of like bounced back and forth over the years where um they would be really close and then one of them would start dating somebody they'd kind of you know like give it a break just because it was it was it's always hard to have you know a guy or girlfriend of the opposite sex when you're dating somebody so right. they kind of would like lose touch and then rekindle so at this time you know um my husband and I had gone out to eat with Nell and Kate. Nell had come to, like, my, my husband's basketball game with us, and he was kind of, like, back in the picture, just, like, a platonic, like, best friend. Yeah. I always keep wondering, like, they like she knew that she was seeing him, but didn't know that they were just friends, and they were aware mm-hmm. about... Maybe that she followed her, saw that she was at the park with him, you know, mm-hmm. but was already angry. That first person you mentioned seems like a pretty good fit for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it could be yeah, a key, not I a agree. <laughs> hmm. Well, gosh, yeah. I, w- I wonder if the FBI should have been aware of that information instead of just going to the police early on. Well, well, I went to the the Metro Park detectives were working with the FBI, so the information that the Metro Parks have had they were sharing with the fbi they were utilizing all the tools of the fbi because the honestly the rangers didn't were not equipped the last time they had a homicide happen in their jurisdiction was 20 years ago Mm -hmm. um the lead detective on this you know is a little bit older than me i'm 33 and this was his first homicide case you know like they just they weren't equipped so thank goodness the FBI was involved because you know i my my family and i have, have struggled with this for two years just because we know that the Metro Parks were not 
capable of handling an investigation like this. And time and time again, we saw that the ball was just, like, was dry. Thanks, Liberty. It's been brutal tonight. Man, you take Brandy out of the uh, equation and there'd be 13 bucks that we've raised on the channel for over an hour and a half. Crazy. Robbed. I guess if I was talking about Summer Wells, boy, it would be something bigger. And things were not followed up on. Thank and, you. you know, it just, it hey, was you're not liver really anymore, slow liver. and really sloppy the way that they had done stuff. That seems like it's, it's not really common, but it happens more than you'd like. That type yeah. of work. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit more about Yes, hit the thumb. If you're out there, hit the thumbs down, please. At the crime scene, there was no. Thank there you, was Kathy somebody fried in the maker. parking lot. Did they hear the, <laughs> shoot, the shots, or did they take off before that? Oh my God, no bail. What do you mean, no bail? Yeah, I guess I have to. Where, yeah, and that's where the seventy dislikes come from. Like, why would you be disliking a show where you're literally, um, you know, interviewing? A sister of a murdered person that has nothing to do with you know it's just troll work okay they talk about it in these little groups that are out there hey thank you Liberty Kathy Friedenmaker and Cammie Curry but hey look I got sent to jail too so yeah because you know a big part of the mission of this channel is the you know the constant fundraising every night the okay, whole month no bail. to help keep me able to do the show and the charities that we do. Okay. Hey, thanks, Cammie Curry. There we go. There we go. There we go. What do you mean? Nobody's dismissing you, LM. I'm just, I know that I'm going to be bringing up the stuff that you're talking about. You keep wanting me to stop the flow of my show to um, answer your question. See, see those comments like that that you just made are what make you somebody that's just very frustrating to have around, okay, LM? Because you kept asking questions that I'm going to be answering in the interview. Ah, oh, man, Jesus. I'm just going to put you on time out. You're crazy. Hey, thanks, Noel Girl and Luca Vega. I don't know what you're talking about, Jennifer. Who are you talking about, Jennifer? Give who? What are you talking about, Jennifer? That doesn't even make any sense. What, what, what did a wrench have to do with anything that we were talking about? Oh, right, Gibson, man. That's right. That's right. That's right, buddy. <laughs> That's ridiculous. See, the thing is, here's the troll night right now. This is where the trolls, they show up. Because I don't agree with the almighty Chris on his tactics. Even though I still think the guy that he is interested in is, in it, is, is interesting to me, I don't agree with the almighty Chris's tactics. All of the whack Hot. job followers of here, come over here. I don't know what you're talking about, Jennifer. You got one more chance to answer the question. What were you talking about? Something to do with a wrench. I don't even know what's going on in here. It's weird. Anyways, thank you, Charleston Amy, Luca Vega, Noel Girl, Cammy Curry, Liberty, Kathy Frydenmaker. Now, the thing is, is, I'm trying to do a show, and so when you ask a whole bunch of questions that are going to be answered, it just throws off the flow of it, okay? Let somebody in the chat answer the questions, but don't direct it to me, because I'm trying to do a show. I'm not the ki I'm not, my channel isn't the kind that stare at the screen, like uh, stare at the camera, and only read questions. I literally have stuff that I'm doing. Oh, that's okay. Jennifer. No problem, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now there's some people, they just sit around and they answer and they communicate the entire time. I try to do that as much as possible, but I can't do it, okay? Because I'm trying to play an interview here. 
I, um, I had it all organized and put out there, and then you want me to answer questions that are going to be talked about and or have already been talked about. Thanks, Miss Frellis. Yeah. And after the interview's over, we can have a call-in show, and you can call in about whatever the hell you want to call in about. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, I appreciate it, everybody. I guess I never made it to jail, Liver D. There was enough bail in there. Chewbacca? Oh, I'll be Chewbacca if you want me to. I don't know what the meaning of life is. Oh, you're back? Awesome, Lee D. Wow, everybody. <laughs> yes, everybody, everybody, worship. If you're not worshiping the almighty interview rooms channel and all their tactics, you are deemed a heretic and are banished to the dregs of YouTube. Yeah. All right, you guys ready? I'm going to keep playing it. He, he, no, he was still sitting there. When the police showed up, he was still sitting there. Um... He said that he didn't see anything. He had his windows up and his air conditioning on. Mm. And he said he didn't hear anything. So then the police had, you know, mentioned that they had tested it. They had done the same thing, put the windows up where he was parked, test shot a gun to see if they could hear it. And they said, if you weren't expecting it, it would be hard to hear. I see. Wow. Interesting. They were doing that just to test to see if he was telling the truth. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he's got, you know, I'm sure... You know, like somebody said, I do enjoy the commentary. Yeah, it is entertaining over there. And I'm just not a big fan of the the um, the analysis of the... I don't know, what's the term, uh, the term of that again? The um, voice analysis or whatever. I just think it's absolutely looking at the worst possible meaning at all times of every single thing that he says. Are there some crazy... You know, things in there that Don says, sure. But th how could there be, in a 20 minutes so far, have been analyzed, and there's been two four-hour shows on 20 minutes of audio? <laughs> you think that there's that many nefarious comments in 20 minutes in that, in there? No, there's not, it's not even close, okay? No, all right, here we go. <laughs> well, they don't allow any negative comments. So. Yeah, and well, the, here's the, the perfect example of them dropping the ball in a major way. When the Metro Park Police showed up and he was there, they just let him leave. They didn't test his hands for guns. Yeah, so that guy that was sitting there, that was at the park, they just let him get, drive away. They didn't even, like, keep him around and ask him any questions. And powder. They didn't, like, you know, take him into a room. Then he, he ended up coming back two days later and speaking with them about hey, what happened, pens. but that's just the, the, when the rangers, these, you know, police showed up, they let him go. They didn't make him stay or question him then or anything like wow. that. Like, it, so there's, a, it's just one of those things that it was like, what did they miss? <laughs> yeah, because it's so close. If anything. I mean, he didn't see anybody he either. Just happened to park right there because it's right the there in your right eyesight there. almost, just off to the left. How do you not see? Someone? Yeah, um, no, he just saw he saw Kate and I'll get out of their cars, and then he stopped. He was looking down at his laptop doing paperwork. Ah oh, man, I do ask Ooh. a question here in a second. Did he hear anything? The whole thing. Just uh, so you're. Uh, let, let me go. Let's go back over how they were uh, positioned again. So he was on mm -hmm. his. I don't know if I, when this was brought up, but I do say something about the, um, uh, I'm not taking calls yet, so you'll be on hold for a long time. The, there was a car parked right there, and I, but I do, do ask, was, did he hear the gunshots? And he said, well, he told the police, well, I was busy, the air conditioning was on and so forth. And the police apparently went out and did an actual test that uh, where they fired a gun, had somebody sit in the car, 
with the air conditioning on, a car. In it, and it would be something you'd have to be listening to. So they did do that test, interestingly. Right side on the bench, is that what you're yep. saying? Okay. Mm -hmm. And Kate was on the left, yeah. Okay, so he was on the right and she was on the left, but when they found them, uh, mm -hmm. how was he positioned again? He was on the, on the grass on the right side of the bench. Okay. Falling over. And then Kate was down uh, below the bank, um, half in the water, half out of the water. So she had made it quite a... Well, it's not that far, actually, from the bench, is it? It's like right there. Yeah, it's like four feet from the bench. So yeah. if she stood up and if she jumped, I don't know. Um, I keep having this information go through my head, and I can't remember after all this time if, it, if I made it up or if I actually heard it. But I, I think that they had said that they were feet, her footprints were in the mud, so she did jump. She was, at, she was like on the go. Someone also said hmm. that there was um, somebody um, heard a scream. So, I mean, she had enough time to... I don't think that she was killed on the bench. I think that she was killed when she got up and or jumped. Yeah, I, I agree with that. So the bullet, though, went sort of from um, upwards in her head, right? From behind mm -hmm. up to... Yeah. yeah. And it was like lodged oh. over Yep, there. and got caught behind her eyebrow. And where did it enter? Do you know? I, mean, I don't mean to get too... Uh, yeah, the lower... I want to say like lower right. I I and I I, rem I read the autopsy report, but I, I don't know the medical terms for like the back of your head. So probably the lower. Well, not not her neck. It was like the lower part. Probably lower occipital bone there, right below it, and then up, and then lodged under their brow. So that's interesting. She must have been like lunging forward and somehow got hit. I mean, occipital on the right in, side, in a and shot. then yeah. it traveled upward, an upward tra trajectory. Uh, yeah, so it's almost like she was lunging forward a little bit. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Huh, man. It's just such a, and, and that's that's about it, right? I mean, is there any more information that's yeah. out there or that you're... Unfor unfortunately, that was it. I mean, we've gone in and out of different, you know, Nell had an ex-girlfriend that was, you know, on my radar because from the beginning... We so Car Car Carnell had a a girlfriend that was on her radar. We were receiving information from his friends. You know, my, my husband was getting messages like, have they looked into this Alyssa? Her name's Alyssa Miller. And her story is strange because it hasn't lined up the entire time that she's been involved with all of this. So from the very beginning, she wouldn't admit that she was referring to herself as Nell's friend. And her, her, I'm sorry, and Nell's funeral, she was announcing that it was, she was his fiance. And uh, she lived nearby. She had a CCW. She had her motorcycle license. So there was a bunch of things that her, and Nell's friend referred to her as crazy. Even, like, Nell's mom had talked about, like, Nell's conversations with her that he broke up with her back in the fall before this happened and would say things like she's, oh, I'm not talking to that crazy bitch anymore. And uh, so for a while, and then every interaction I had with her, because there'd be, you know, we'd have, you know, mutual people at these vigils and everything like that. She, she, she was really strange. She had met my mom down at the bench. My parents before Kate had, you know, a plot. Um, my parents used to go down to the bench and just pay their respects. And they went down there a lot, you know. And Alyssa was down there at one point with my mom, and my mom was saying, I'm the mother of Kate, like she was murdered here. This Alyssa girl didn't even tell my mom who she was. And this was like, you know, months after, like a long time after, and this person wouldn't tell, like, you know, can have that connection with my mom, like, oh, I was Nell's girlfriend, you know, she didn't address herself, she didn't tell my mom anything. My mom got home and was telling me about this girl she saw there, and um, I was Kinda like, weird, wait huh? a minute, her name's Alyssa. Is this Alyssa Miller, his girlfriend? And so just from the from the very get-go, and back and forth with this girl, and um, for a long time, I was you know, fixated that she had done it. Um, I remember thinking it could be a girlfriend of mm -hmm. Nell, uh, so I guess that would fit into that, but... 
Um, I mean, she could be at the bench too, grieving him, ex girl. Mm -hmm. But it's an ex girlfriend, so that's a little bit. How long had they stopped dating? Um, he, like I said, I think that they broke up in the fall. That's when his mom talked about. Um, oh, sorry, I missed that. Oh, that's okay. Uh, in the fall, his mom had talked about now bringing her to like a family barbecue, and then the next family event she was like hey are you bringing Alyssa and he said no like I'm done with that crazy bitch like that comment had oh, happened yeah. and then I think they were working together on like a work project that Nell was trying to get up and running called Sledges Helping Hands it was you know a um, transportation service for kids inner city kids kids with you know disabilities that needed transportation to various sports or events or anything like that so he and Alyssa were working on that. I don't. I think that they were platonic, but then, uh, but I don't. I don't know the nature of the relationship. Hey, thanks. They Pets. may have started seeing each other again, but I, I highly doubt that they were engaged when she was saying that she was his fiance and his general. I mean, what what do your family members think? I mean, what are they leaning um, towards? You know? I think. I, it, just like me, it goes back and forth all the time. Um, my mom was one of those. Um, the grieving type that really latched on to what uh, oh, like psychics had told her. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she was under the impression that these it was two random guys that did it um, with, you know, there's no physical evidence to back any of that up. So, um, and then my dad, my dad, I think, I don't know if it's because he can't really fathom this being, you know, quote, Kate's fault. He thinks that it was somebody that Nell knew. Um, he doesn't, because he doesn't know, like, we knew, my dad uh, was introduced to Nell, you know, Kate, they had been friends for so long. He used to come to my parents' house all the time and, like, pick Kate up or, like, hang out, you know, anything like that. He was a really nice guy. But he didn't know Nell, you know, very well. He didn't know what his past was like, what he was like when he was a teenager in his 20s, because he was significant, I shouldn't say significantly, but 10 years older than Kate. So my dad thinks that it has something to do with Nell. You know, it wasn't... Yeah. And I don't know if that's just, like, the the guilt he would feel if if it were Kate's, you know, quote, fault. I, I don't know. Have they checked it's it with any of the guys on Tinder? Any of the other people? That's oh, it. yeah. Um, yeah, there's been a lot, and I think, like I said, the only alibi they told me about was Brandon Trice. Um, all the other ones that, because I had stories, you know, I could remember, and, and that was the thing, is that I was Kate's closest confidant. And, you know, she told me everything about everything. Mm -hmm. And so I remember Died. Yeah, you got really you cut out a little bit multiple here. Multiple times. Sorry about it. you cut out. Oh, right sorry. There. What do you remember? Oh, um, I remember every guy she had gone out on a date on a date with. I knew their name. I knew where they went. I knew, you know what I mean. That's so amazing. Hmm. That I gave memory. them every single piece of information that, about everybody that was in and out of Kate's life over the past, you know, before this happened. That's like tw like ten years. Yeah, I mean that Hassan guy it looks sounds pretty dodgy, right? But the uh, you know the fact that she was on Tinder, there could have been somebody that she had a one nighter type deal with, but got obsessed, and you know wants her to just be for him, and then she's following him around because she won't return his calls or something, and then and you know she he knew her, where she worked, and then he followed her all the way to the park, and then sees her sitting. With another guy. Of course, you know, you might want to ask. Uh, you probably have the gun for a particular reason If in that scenario. I don't know, it's pretty bizarre. Yeah, you could see some guy thinking that she just liked him. Because she probably oh, wouldn't I guess say I said that, to all that? of them that, <laughs> hey, I've got this other guy. And then, yeah. then they got suspicious and followed. And then saw her <laughs> right. with him. Um, mm -hmm. But in that scenario, I wonder if is it the guy that you would shoot first, or would it be the the woman? So it seems like the, yeah, person, the person you're mad at, right? Yeah, because that's you, what I would think. That's and that's what. But also, Nell is the biggest threat, you know. Hey, uh, Hannah, why would you be making a video about people on my channel? That doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't want to be, you know, I I don't know what you guys are doing. I just want to be able to do my show. Can I just start doing? Can I just do the show and say what I think on my shows? You know, I've told the moderators, 
You don't get to block somebody because you disagree with something that they said. Um, if they disparage the channel, you can time them out. Um, and you'll, you can tell when there's a troll. Just remove them immediately, a troll comment, okay? But I've told you guys this a thousand times. I, I just don't want to have to deal with this aspect of the show anymore. I just want to do the show, okay? Is that something that's going to be possible? Or do I just turn off the comments? Or you know, I don't know how it works. Uh, yeah, so the thing is, is I know that the moderators are always, you know, they're defending the channel most of the time, but I don't want comments. If you're in an argument with somebody and they're arguing back, you don't get to remove their comments, okay? That just means that you were in an argument with somebody. It's not like this magical, hey, I win, and I'm going to stop them from being able to comment. Or remove all theirs. Yeah, well, I'm not talking about that one particular person. I'm talking about uh, just in general. You know, that's something that I talk about. Uh, we, we've talked about that, Zozo, on the side. So, I, you know, I don't need your little back-talking comment right there either because I'm not even talking about that one. I'm talking about... <laughs> it's just so... It's so this is crazy. I'm talking about, in general, everybody, if somebody has a, an opinion, even a crazy, alien, stupid-ass theory, just leave it there, okay? If they say something disparaging to the channel, then, yes, go ahead. Remove the comment and them, probably, you know, obviously, because they're disparaging the channel. I don't need it, okay? But we've talked about this a thousand times. It should be kind of obvious. Um, so if you're in an argument with somebody and you're, you know, belittling them and whatnot, and then they belittle you or whatever, I'm not sure how you, you know, why does it, I don't know, just try not to get into those kind of things. Yeah, I don't even know what comment Zozo's even talking about up there. Didn't, didn't read it. Uh, let's see. But I don't know what you're talking about, Hannah S., when you're talking about, hey, there's a video coming out. If you put a video out on any of this shit, <laughs> just do whatever the hell you want, man. I'm just so tired of it, you know? You, are you guys really interested in true crime at all, or is it just this bullshit stuff that goes on in the background? Every time I look in there, LM earlier freaking out about ridiculous shit because I wasn't answering her freaking questions, Right? Because I wasn't answering her questions. I knew it was all coming up on the show two minutes later. Do I have to deal with that? <laughs> God. Yeah. Hey, hey, Scott, go, go, go F yourself, man. You're such a dipshit. Get out of here. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I, cause, I mean, I always wonder sometimes... It seems like it's more entertaining for people to sort of get in these little battles back and forth, okay? I don't know. I'm just I'm, I'm at the point where I'm just so frustrated with this stuff. You know, every time I look in there, there's somebody bitching about just everything, okay? It sucks. Uh, he would be the, the, you know, he would be the one to... Hurt you. I mean, our, our channel does more good than all the other stupid ass YouTube channels combined, okay? Every one of them. Uh, we really do, okay? So that's the truth of it. And yet you get these people coming in here and bitching and moaning. And you know the stupid ass ones I'm referring to. Not all of them, okay? All of the ones that I'm referring to. All right, good. If he turned around, if you missed. So you better, you would be the bigger threat. I think that's yeah. how it was also explained. That makes sense. So even if the target was um, Kate, they, mm -hmm. the shooter would have maybe taken out Nell first so that mm -hmm. he wouldn't be there to attack him. Exactly. After, or him or her, I mm -hmm. guess. Like yeah. I said, I'm recording this. Is there anything, I mean, can I play some of this or do I have to delete some names? Oh, yeah. You don't care about the names yeah. or anything? Okay. No, no, I don't, no. At this point, I mean, um, no, I don't. It's been two years, and they have absolutely nothing, so. And, um, 
No, no, I don't. I don't care. Okay. See, but see, Hannah S. right there. I don't care what your opinion is on it right now. Okay. We just went through the whole thing. I explained how I want it to be. I don't need you to get your little dig in there and then watch somebody remove your comment and you say, "See, look." Okay. You're just doing a passive aggressive attack again. Use it all. All right. Well, tell you what I'll. Well, here's what I'll do is um, I'll probably I might even play it. Vacation time. Beach. Palm tree. Clinking beer mugs. <laughs> What's going on in here? Yes, LM. But you did you read your comments that you made? You were very harsh and angry. Okay, because I didn't answer your questions. So what you did was uncalled for, not what I just said to you. Okay? So I just realized that. Hey, thank you, Jen B and Meredith McKenzie and EDM Summer. Tonight. But uh, what I'll do, oh, I'll go back on <laughs> the story again. And then maybe after the Hey, LM, here's what you said, LM. LM, you said this. Why would I donate any money to this channel? Because you're not answering my question. Now, LM said, why should I donate anything? He didn't answer my questions. You don't think that's rude as hell, LM? Just because I didn't answer your question? Anyways. You're the best, Gray. And don't you forget it. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> That's just, well, I didn't say anything. Okay? Listen, you don't have, nobody has to send me a nickel, okay? The money that's sent to this channel supports my channel to keep me, allowing me to be able to do seven hours of, you know, the research and the show every day. And charities. I donate a huge percentage of it. And you guys see it every single month. That's going on. That's happening. Now, that is the whole story, LM. That is the whole story. That's the whole story. Prior to that, you interrupted the show, said, Hey, Gray, can you go back and show the maps? And I, I knew that it was coming up here in just a minute. So I said, Hold on. Wait. You'll see it. Thanks, Laurie Grant. <laughs> I don't know, man. Oh, jeez. Some days it just feels like you're, you're trying to swim upstream. Yeah. Hang in there. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think I have the best mods out there. They're always defending the channel, and they're, you know, everywhere they are, they're always defending me and everything. And the thing is, is, uh, but there's a certain point where I don't, I don't need, you know, yeah. Let me just tell you how it works. I'll, I'll see a crazy comment, and I'll say, oh, that's the most craziest thing I've ever seen. And, you know, have sound effects and so forth. But, we don't need to, um, like, let me be that person. You guys just moderate hateful speech or disparaging channel uh, comments to the channel. And I think it's kind of obvious what ones those are. If I they say something really stupid, it's okay. Now, on Delphi Nights, when people start, you know, you guys know who the trolls are on that one. It's pretty obvious. Thank you, Tracy. Lanky Tor, Baby Brown Bear Cub, and Lori Grant. Okay, I'm going to rewind it a little bit. No, no, I don't, I don't care. Okay. You can use it all. All right, well, I'll tell you what I'll, well, here's what I'll do is, um, I'll probably, I might even play it tonight, but mm -hmm. uh, what I'll do, I'll, I'll go back over the story again, and then maybe after the show I'll make a post and then people can ask questions, and then maybe I can, uh, maybe I can call you again and just have you answer all the questions. Is that something? That yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I was, hope so. It was too. just I a mean, month it's ago. It's been like a lot of, it's been a lot of build up and let down over two years. You know, we would get hopeful about something where it's kind of been like, uh, we just try to stay baseline. If we hear any, you know, I haven't talked to detectives in what th four months. No, I'm sorry, two months. Back in June, I was talking to them about because uh, right around the anniversary, they got a bunch of leads to come in. But uh, yeah, I haven't spoken with them in two months. That's it. 
Thank you, Gray. I'm interested in the story. All right. There you go. Here's a poll question on that one. Hey, don't forget to put your questions in the community post. For it. So it's just for channel members only. And so there you go. Yeah, uh, I, I'm going to try to get a hold of that guy, Mod. Believe it or not, I have his phone number. I'm trying to figure out how that would go. <laughs> Man. And, and sorry for my, you know, I just had to say what I was thinking. Hope you guys don't mind. I'm not a robot. Yes, you are, Gray Hughes. You're a robot. Gee, Timmy, that's me. No, he really is a robot. Yes, he really is. Well, actually, you guys are robots, okay? Yeah, no. Well, I'll just do like a synopsis here. Apparently, the Kate was at her apartment. Oh, well, she was at work, and then apparently, it sounds like uh, she got home maybe at 2.30 and then went to the gym. She said it was by the swimming pool, so I'm assuming maybe that's the gym right there. Went to the gym, and then at 4.30 she was seen, I think this is the order, talking to somebody on her phone. And she seemed like she was upset. and But the records show that there were phone calls. Between 4.30 and 5.08, they don't know where she was, but there was two phone calls made. The phone just pinged off the same tower. Uh, however, there should be... You know how cell towers have the pies on them? It seems like that would help a little bit. And uh, then apparently the friend that she, Carnell, uh, Nell for short, she that's who she was talking to during that 38 minutes and that one call from over here. And then they both met here at this park. They parked their cars. They walked over to a bench right here. And then there was an actual painter I think parked in this stall over here and there was a couple other people there and uh, cars anyways and they walked over the bench and sat there somebody came up from behind him and shot him in the head and killed both of them in a situation like that what do you think why would somebody just randomly come up and shoot them now thanks for all you do gray proud to be a forever freak this is one of my happy places, hot. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Hey, let me ask you something, Karen. Are you, does it bug you tremendously that the, there's this, that word Karen that everybody uses now? I mean, it would, I think it would suck to, uh, I would feel bad like every day when somebody goes, oh, you, look at that, you're being a Karen if you actually had the name Karen, you know? I was talking to another Karen about that, and it's like, man, imagine like, just think of your name and then people using your name all the time as some person that's, uh, you know, complaining about something all the time. I don't know. Kind of sucks. I want to know your opinion on that one. <laughs> oh, you call yourself Karen? <laughs> no, okay. Well, you spelled it the same, so thanks. Thanks for helping me out with the phonetics there. I call myself Karen, not Karen. But I get you, you probably meant Karen, right? <laughs> yes, I think I would definitely be changing my name to Karen at that point. Out loud. Well, I'm not a Karen, I'm a Karen. <laughs> yeah, hopefully that goes away at some point. Because there's a lot of Karens out there. I mean, people with the name Karen. And the other ones. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, I'm sorry about that. I've even used it on here. Listen, I'm never referring to you if I say that. All right. So let's see what the poll has here. We've got... Uh, 
Uh, 101 votes. 93 uh, said acquainted. Six stranger. So, you know, just people's opinion, obviously, is dramatically in favor of someone acquainted. All right. Well, now we're ready to do it. Should we do the, the uh, like a little mini vacation or not? <laughs> I think my wife wants to yell at me for sounding the way I sound. <laughs> she, she was looking over me and going, great, great, jeez. But I just have to, you know, I got to say what I'm thinking, right? I think there was right up close. They were shot with a small caliber handgun, uh, both in the back of the head. He was shot in the back of the head, the neck, but the bullet went downwards. It didn't kill him. And then he was shot in the left side of the head, above his ear. She was shot at the base of the skull, but the trajectory ended up behind an eyebrow. So that's a little weird, right? And now I'm on vacation talking about Gunshot angles. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Thanks, Brandy Bradford. And now the first one doesn't sound like he's bending over. It went downwards. Shot in the in the head, and the bullet went downwards into the neck. Hey, thanks, Lanky Tor, Baby Brown Bear Cub, and. Nicole Wilson. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. So if you're new to the channel, uh, right now, here I'm going to go, we're, we're at 26,000 to prime related charities this year, 22 last year, 48,000 since January 2020. We're not even two years in. Got four more months to go, and or months, M-U-N-T-S. Thanks, Nicole Wilson, Lanky, Tor, Baby Brown Bear Cub. <laughs> yeah. Vacation and Blondie, the tide is high and I'm moving on. Yeah, probably like right from behind him, shot in the head, low caliber bullet, maybe ricocheted and went down. Then, then they were probably turned their head like this and then boom, right in the side of the head. So the shot hit him, it was probably like this, boom, and then boom, again like that. Thanks, so, Gray. Like right like this, boom, bullet went down, and then he turns his head and then bang, right above the ear, and then he falls over like that and kills him. Then she probably was like, oh my God, jumps up, and, she, and then boom, and a lucky shot hit her. Diet Coke, extra ice. I'll, okay, I'll be getting one of those. Nothing in the Diet Coke? Yeah, it was a 22 or 25 caliber. She said 22. I know, I was thinking that too, Madison. So it's kind of weird. It's a weird one. However, the Hassan guy had a gun sitting on the table. Interestingly, they finally... they I mean, it's just now... They interviewed him, finally. After two years, the guy that went over to the house. A Diet Coke Extra Ice blue heart I think I think he was shot first regardless and the reason I think that is that uh, you gotta in our conversation it's like you gotta take out the big guy first and let's say the girl was angry wouldn't would she kill him f for cheating or her out of anger how dare you take my man how do women think in those situations Let me, let me do a poll on that one. Tumbler glass, have a shot. Ah, it's hard to ask that question. Hey, there you go, the Jim Beeman diet. Thanks, DTJO, Christy B. 
<laughs> Alright, hold on. Why would the woman... Let's see. I know the answers I want on there. It's my birthday, Gray. Have a drink, horse. Okay, here we go. I know, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm asking this quite right, but... Thanks, living it! Jim Beam for the Diet Coke with extra ice. Oh, it's your birthday, Christy B? We'll have to have Mary Lou uh, sing you a song a little bit. For keeping it real. What is it, Christy B? Yes, it's Christy B. I said it already. Happy birthday to Christy B. Happy birthday to Christy B. Happy birthday to Christy B. <laughs> I think uh, I think uh, Mary Lou got stuck on like some weird sort of um, endless loop or something. <laughs> Happy birthday, Christy B. Oh, and thank you, TTJO Tracy. Jim Beam for the Diet Coke with extra ice. Living it. <laughs> Come on, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Huh? It's, it's Mary Lou. She tries hard, you guys. Don't be mean to her. All right, I'm going to go use the facilities really quick. Thank you all for the vacation. Oh, so you're more angry at the man, huh? Interesting. Huh. Is that how you would really feel, though? Well, let me... Okay. Hold on a second. Hold on. Let me do this one. All right, this is a better pull. Let me end this one. Hold on. So what do we got in this one? Okay, this one is... Okay, this is the one I think I meant to ask. You guys get that one.
a shot with a Diet Coke and ice. Okay. Okay, so it's a little different number there. It's not almost the same, though. <laughs> but why are you angry at the X? Don't you think that the girl was... Yeah, so I guess it would be the X, right? I think the guy is more angry at the guy. What happened? What am I supposed to be looking at? What happened? What happened? What happened? What am I looking at? Oh, this happened to my friend of mine. He had just gotten married to a new woman and her ex-husband knocked on the door one night and yeah, she survived but my friend did not. So the, the man got killed, so that's the reverse. See, a guy would be more mad at the, the guy Is that what you want me to look at, uh, Michelle? All right, let me get off of vacation mode. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. All right, uh, what are we at here? All right, so let's do the... I hope you guys found that interview interesting. I did. I think we got some extra information. Uh, both of the, uh, the names and... You know, the, the ex-girlfriend and the ex-boyfriend, or more of a fling, on-again, off-again guy. Uh, he is... Those two aren't in the media. You don't see that. Oh, and there it is. Gen H. I got this one. And also... Uh, let's see. Hold on. I think it was... Oh yeah, and TTJO Tracy got a little uh, Jim Beam in there. Okay, <laughs> not a lot, just some. Yeah, that was cool. Now, if you guys some put some really good questions in the community section of, and it's only for channel members only. If you can put some questions in there, that'd be great. And then what I'll do is I'll pick the best ones out. Uh, you know, remove duplicates and then, and then, uh, you know, I'll call her back up and she can answer those. Could have been like the golfing case that just happened. Yeah, we covered the golfing one over and over. Actually figured out what happened before it happened. <laughs> I mean, not before it happened, before it came out. Oh my God, how did you know it happened before it happened? Oh my God, are you a psychic? Well, no, I meant we figured out what happened before it came out in the news. Like, it was really close. All right, so the phone lines are open, everybody, and you can call in about any topic. Even Summer Wells or uh, Delphi, if you want to, or you can call in about this case that we just did. Uh, you can call in about anything. We've got uh, over an hour or so left. All right. So I hope you guys aren't upset that I, I just wanted to say that I, I really want people to be able to type in even dumb comments. And I might see a dumb comment and I'll make fun of it and stuff. <laughs> But that's just what I do. I don't. You guys don't need to be doing that. You just be the ambassadors, and then remove the trolls and the disparaging comments. And I think we all know who those are. And now, if a and also if a person just comes in and starts attacking moderators, you can get re, you time them out too. Delete their comment and time them out. Like if there was no previous conversation, but if you had been blocking all their comments and they didn't see, that's where. It, I don't want to have to deal with that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Awesome. 
How many times have you come up with miles of practically locating a missing person by using just math? Yeah, a few times. One of the one, the best ones was, I can't remember, it was this girl that went missing in Florida, drove off the side of the road, and we even looked on Google Earth on that exact place where she went over. That was wild. Uh, mapping is a huge part portion of crime. I think that, you know, Chris and Mike, they, they were two people that were, you know, doing, they used to do shows together. Uh, oh, it looks like the meeting ended because there was 40 minutes of idle time. So we have to do a new meeting. You'll have to call in again if you, anybody wants to call in. I'm sure they would agree with what I Recording just said. Recording in progress. Uh, there we go. And <whistles> yeah, I think it's, I think mapping is about 40%. It's a huge portion on certain cases. Uh, it's not as big on, you know, certain cases where it, there's a murder inside of a house and then it's not quite a big a deal but when there's somebody's taken some from somewhere and found somewhere else it's a, it means a lot if that made any sense Okay, there's a new number now. It's right here. Okay, I just had to make a new one there. So anything, you guys? Summer Wells? Uh, <laughs> I mean, what are your thoughts on the ongoing? I mean, uh, Don was on an interview on another channel recently. He's a He's a strange guy. And like we said from the beginning, you know, if the stuff that people have said about him is, is true, makes him a much more likely person than if those weren't true. Because he has no um, sexual assault charges on his, on his record of any kind. He has none. Except now you have information from family members that say that they were assaulted. And it sounds pretty believable. So. And and we also said on here, if he said, well, it's partially her fault, too, you know, referring to a five-year-old and he's 12, well, that's, you know, that's completely bullshit. A five-year-old doesn't even know what the hell, what's going on. Do I not believe what, Noma Domo? I don't know what you're asking. Like, what does that even mean? <laughs> Do you not believe it? Believe what? Yeah. He, he's interviewed with more people than I've ever seen in almost any case. Here's what I think is is something that's definitely possible. No, I believe I believe. I think I believe it. No modomo. Oh, well, he admits to it. <laughs> okay, so it's not me believing it. Don admits to assaulting his stepsister. He admits to it. Uh, so that isn't something that's. Uh, I guess I I was wording it wrong. I forgot that part that he literally admits to it. So you got to say at that point that he definitely uh, admits to it, and therefore it, it's... Okay, so what I've said before, if it was his own biological sister, I think the odds of him assaulting his own daughter would, go, would um, raise quite a bit. However, the fact that he assaulted a young girl... It okay, so he was 12 and 5, 
13 and 6, 14 and 7, 15 and 8. I mean, think about that. 15 and 8, right? 16 and, um, I mean, 12 and 5 is ludicrous, right? But 16 and 9, 17 and 10, 18. You know, so he did it all the way up until I think he was 19 and she was 12. Okay? So she, she has no responsibility. So I just think it's, that it's, uh, makes it lower odds because it was a that he would do it to Summer because it was his step sister. Um, however, I, I'm not saying, oh well, he couldn't have done it then. I mean, don't everyone always takes things and twists them around to mean something totally different than what I'm saying. I'm going purely off of. I think it's really obvious what I'm saying there. Well, no, I, but I wasn't saying it like that, no, Madoma. I didn't say that at all. You just didn't want to hear how I said it. I said, um, you know, if it if it's true what they're saying, then this, okay? But then I re remembered that he said that he did that, so it is true. I didn't need to clarify it. I only did it because you wanted me to. It's people that aren't listening that get have the problem. Right. Oh, yeah? Personal paranormal? Yeah, so I have a channel called Paranormal Experiences, but it's not what you think. It's not like, ooh, ooh. You know, I don't want to do... When people say, oh, I see ghosts all the time. It's really just what was one-off. I don't even use that channel very much anymore, though. I'm too busy. I don't have time. But you can go check out the ones that are already there. It's pretty cool. I used to make actual video videos where people told their stories and gave me pictures and I sort of told the story like an actual video. But then it turned into where people called in and told their stories. Because it's so time consuming to make videos. Literally the videos where you make a 15 minute video with all the different graphics and everything. And then you put it out there. It takes a lot, a lot, a lot of time. And I'd rather do live shows where we're just going over a whole bunch of different cases. Now it's more like when people call in, and you know those weird things that happen to you. You know, I've told my story a million times. I'll just throw it out there again. Is you know, I had a brother that died in 1986 at the University of Oregon at the Theta Chi fraternity. That's where he died in the fraternity. And then they, after he died, it was, uh, that was March 13th, 1986. His birthday is March 9th. So four days after his birthday, he died in the fraternity at the age of 22, and I was 20. And uh, they made a plaque on the basketball court called the Garrett Hughes Memorial Basketball Court. And, um, you know... So it had his birthday and the date he died and everything on it. And then the next year on his birthday, I'm out there shooting baskets in the in the rain. Because, you know, it's March, right? So on March 9th, 1987, I'm shooting baskets on the court named after him. And I look up in the sky and there's a dot. And, it, and then I look up and I realize, wow, that's a balloon. And then all of a sudden it floats right into my hand and it's a big cellophane happy birthday balloon that lands in my hands on my brother's birthday on a rainy day in March 1987. Tell me what the odds of that are. I mean, out of uh, all the places the balloon could have flown around, and it's raining. Who, who the hell had a balloon anyways? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell's are we, are we getting into this stupid argument shit again up here? Man, one of these days I'm just gonna take a blowtorch to the the chat and just. <laughs> yeah, it was cool, Brandy. It was such a weird feeling. You know what's weird? The balloon floated on the ceiling for a week too. I mean, I'm sure that had something to do with the cold. 
and the hot in the heat. Yeah. Thank you. Not really? Well, that's a little bit like the uh, Delphi case, LM. How they saw the two deer up by the, the bodies, actually. It was weird. I mean, I've told the story multiple times. Jan H has probably heard that story six times, I, I would imagine. <laughs> and Lanky Tour, and Zozo, and Sarita, and uh, Lee D, or Liver D, I guess. Yeah, cool. Oh, really cool. What do you what do you think of them, P Dub? Some old ones out there. Now you go watch the April Tinsley ones. That one was one of the craziest ones ever. That I here. Let me let me show you this one. That was one of the neat mapping moments. Here, let me show you this one. April Tinsley. That's one of the most bizarre stories that's out there, anyways. Yeah, Is it right there. Why did they completely change this? Hmm. Well, no, it wasn't found over there. She was found over here. Oh yeah, so this was one of those crazy moments. There was a shot in the air where you could see where the crime scene was, but I was having a hard time locating some of these other buildings over here because of what the driveways look like. And it turns out there was a driveway that had a driveway and then grass and then a driveway. And then there was this opening right here. So it was a driveway, driveway, and then grass in the middle. Do you get what I'm saying here? So then I was looking around, I went down, I don't know if Street View was here or not. Yeah, there is. So I went down to Street View here, and I looked at this one, because it had a general shape, and look at this, look at this. <laughs> is that crazy or what? They literally paved in that spot that was grass in 1980, right there. So then I knew, yes, I've got the right spot, and then I saw that the creek was right over here, and then she was found right down here. Really, really crazy. I think, I think just right off the edge right here. And then he actually, uh, he left a shoe. There was one shoe found there. And he put another shoe somewhere else. Uh, but law enforcement didn't say that to anybody. And then in 1990... He, uh, there it is right there. Things are moving slow on my screen. Hold on. There it is. Right here. Not sure why it's not working here. Let me see. Come on, Google Earth. Ah, it's like frozen up. Oh, that might might be working now. Here we go. I'm just gonna let it sit here. There you go. Okay. Now on this barn right here, he said, "Oh, I was the one that raped and killed April Tinsley," and then said. Have you found the, uh, there was actually people on WebSleuths, I think, that said, I think, I wonder if it says, did you find the other shoe? And it did. <laughs> they never showed that on 
on the media. There was another portion that said, did you find the other shoe? So then they knew that the guy that rode on this barn in 1990, 88, 88 was when Tinsley was killed. Uh, I think I said 81 earlier, that was wrong. 88 and then 90, there was a note on this barn right here that said that. So they knew that he'd written that message. The FBI profile on this case is the best thing, it's the best I've ever seen, unbelievable. I mean, it literally, they knew exactly the area that he lived and everything. Then in 2006, I think, 16 years later, he sent photographs in of him on a bed, but like from the waist down. And then he put these, uh, put semen in used condoms on these different mailboxes, one, two, right around in this area. And this is another one of those mapping, another mapping moment in this one was, we were doing a show because, um, let's see, there it was. What, what were we doing up here? It was so bizarre. Where the hell was he found? I think it was one of these towns here. We were looking up on the roads and we were so close to where they actually arrested. Yeah, there it was. So John Miller was arrested in this mobile home right here. We went to this town where the, the bicycle notes were found and we're going down streets and we were so close to where he lived. The FBI said he'd lived near a school and that's what this is over here. Um, it's just because he could look at kids and when the police arrested him, he, they asked him, why, did, why do you think we're here? And he said, April Tinsley. So it might have been his only victim. But he acted just like a serial killer. Right with the notes and the, you know he's continually trying to engage law enforcement, but there was a 16-year break. Who are you talking to, Chelsea? <laughs> yeah. Well, Don, call in. Well, well, if hey Don, if that's really you, you're the one that said that you, you did do it, right? I don't believe that's him, but yeah. Yeah, what are the odds that that's him with the same exact picture off of Facebook? Come on. <laughs> you did. Right? Come on, you guys. No way. Yeah, that Godzi uh, guy, he created a fake account. Had my picture on it. Exact everything. Great Hughes Investigates. And then had a big, like a, somebody wearing underwear or something. I can't even remember. It was like a, it was ridiculous. Anyways, that, that account's been removed for impersonation. If you guys see another one doing that, like that, let me know. Well, are any of you guys going to call in or what? What's going on? Oh, I don't know if he left. Was he saying anything more than just that one comment? He probably just went over to one of the other channels discussing it. Why would he even be here? He doesn't. I wasn't even not in the title or anything yeah he is that Godzi guy he was normal on Facebook and then he <clears throat> he kept trolling I go dude why are you tro making troll accounts he goes this case is just too important man and I go well so what why are you making one of me why don't you just <laughs> oh god he's just a he's one of those really shitty people that exist Calls five times during a show, pretending to be some other voice. LM's like that sister you always fight with, right?
Oh, it looks like somebody can't call in. What's, go what's going on? 573. Yeah, hello? 57. Well, I'm doing a show. What do you mean, what am I doing? Yeah, you gotta turn down your audio. You got yeah, what's going on? Who's this? Um, my name's Luca Vega, and um, I just wanted to shoot this up with you about the Summer Wells case. Oh, yeah? What's going on? Well, I sort of put out a theory today in one of the, the, the discussion groups, and it didn't go over very well, but I just kind of wanted to see what you thought about it. Yeah, what's that? So, I'm thinking that something happened at that water because of the aerial view. It looks like there's a tree there that was barely under the water. If he threw her, and he's a big, strong boy. He's probably grown a lot since he's seen her. I think it was four yeah. to six months, something like that, that he hadn't seen her. He's been growing. She's tiny. If he threw her too hard, he could have threw her down the edge. Well, who said she? That he did that? I'm sure. Who said he threw I'm her? Not saying, I'm, not, I'm not saying that anybody said no. that he threw her. I'm saying that it's a possibility that she had internal injuries and that she could, you know, succumb to her injuries at no. home or on the way home. Well, why would the grandma and all the kids make up and still be holding to a lie? After they've already been removed from the home, don't you think they would have eventually told the truth and said, oh, you, you know, I didn't see. You would think so. Yeah. You would think so, but kids can be sworn into secrecy for 30, 40 years. Yeah. I, I, it happens all the time. But I don't know. What's the, the youngest one's age? The What's the youngest one's age? I believe age? nine. Yeah. Nine. Are you sure? Yeah, I don't know. That seems like kind of a... But when Chris is interviewing a... He yawns when he's fixing to tell a fib, and that's my opinion. It, it seems like that seems to be an indicator, and he, I don't know why he would lie. Why would Don call her phone and say there was a lurker on the property? How would he know that, and why wouldn't he go straight home? Why wouldn't he be like, I'm headed straight there. You get your ass there, too. Somebody might hurt the kids, and if CPS was coming... Okay. Why, would, why would they, you know, just kind of blow that off? I think H is making that up as an as sort of uh, to, to steer the narrative. And then also yeah. the, the it's done text. That sounds like baloney to me. Who does that? Yeah, I don't believe that anything that corny. H is saying. Other, I do believe it's possible that they did tell him that they weren't able to verify Don's, like where he was that day. I think that because, like, there's no really reason... That's a weird thing for him to even think up. So, I thought that was interesting. What if Don told you, I'm really tired? Would you believe it? Because he used L-Y in the word really. So, would that mean he's wide awake? Um, I, I say stuff that is in L-Y, but that doesn't mean I'm lying. And I wonder... No, if no, you... No, they just said it on the Does other show. Does that indicate a lie? Yeah, it said if L-Y indicates a lie, so... Mm. That's the yeah, kind of stuff I don't agree with, her. but uh, apparently, if you if you don't agree with that kind of garbage, you are, uh, you know, you're shunned and avoided. I don't agree that well, L Y means that. the whole problem. Yeah. Whenever, whenever, Don, whenever Chris was there interviewing Candace and Hunter, you can tell that he's trying to push one narrative, and that's Don. Throughout the whole thing, he he takes up for Candace and. Oh, she was really emotional, and she didn't go talk to the rescue guys because, you know, she was just really in it, in the moment right there. Oh, bullshit. These people didn't care about their kids, or they would not have left them home alone. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I, I, I see what you're saying. Charged. I mean, there's a lot of things that you could say are, quote, possible. Uh, in your scenario, this is what this is what would have to be, have taken place, is that they realize, hey, we need to take some fake photographs of her on the way home. And then when we get home, we're going to tell all the kids and everybody that, hey, something happened to her. But we, uh, we're going to lose you guys if you guys tell the truth. And then they sort of waited around. They did something with her body. Then they came back and then called Don. 
at, maybe even told Don earlier. Who knows? Mm-hmm. And maybe maybe mm-hmm. he came he knows back. Maybe he I came back he and he moved her for. The, I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff, and then none of these kids or anybody ha- uh, in the weeks since they've been in these foster homes have came forward to tell the truth. Mm-hmm. That's what we well, have to believe. I feel like if you if if you got three kids watching Minecraft on YouTube, they're very focused or they're asleep. And I had an older brother. If my mom said, watch your sister, I'll be back. My brother wouldn't give two shits what I did. Yeah. It, it makes no sense. And she's no helicopter mom. Let's be real. Well, here's one thing I come back here's one thing I would okay. say. Oh, something was wrong. Yeah, how about, with her how about this? Don't get to come back yeah. and check. Yeah, don't don't worry about. How about like don't keep sticking with that theory. Think about other ones. Like, like what would happen well, at yeah, the home? Don't you think I, that I, uh, when they went to to do the gardening, don't you think that when she said yeah, so I went in and it was just three or five minutes later. For me, she was just trying to sound like a more doting mom because something bad happened. And she wants to make it seem like she was right there and there's no negligence of any kind and she was just awesome and it was just somebody who got her out really quick. I bet you the three to five minutes, if that, if all the story is true, but I think that that is more like 20 to 30 minutes. Well, if you believe the text that's going around from grandma to somebody, I forget who, it, it might have been Allie, but... Um, it said they were off the shit. And I looked that up, and I think that is uh, doing pills some other form than just taking them with water, like snorting them or um, injecting them. And if you watch Hunter's video, she gets up, Allie gets up, goes somewhere for a few minutes, and then comes back and starts making all these weird faces. Like, is she doing drugs right there? Yeah, but who cares? Yeah, look at look, that interview with. Well, I think the interview with Hunter and the interview with Hunter and Allie is completely worthless. I, I think it to me what it was was I don't think it I is. Think Allie, I think Ali. I think Ali sat else. there. Well, I'm still in the middle of the sentence. Allie, I think Ali was sitting over there, and she was trying to get Hunter to say the stuff that she wanted him to say. On occasion, Don, uh, Chris didn't notice that. He said, "Oh no, I didn't see any uh, coaching at all." That, if you guys believe that, watching that. Um, you no, know, so I, no. to me that showed that he wasn't really paying attention because um, Allie was completely, and the grandmother, on multiple times, looked at him and kind of nodded and made sure that, and I think that they were aware when he was looking at them. But you would think after watching it again, he would say, you know what, they did kind of coach him on a few of those moments there. It's clear she's acting so strange. She is. She's mouthing words. She's nodding. You know, she's putting her phone down real hard on certain questions. It's, she acts strange. But also something, while I was doing this little deep dive into Hunter, um, he, I caught something that they had brought up, and I'm sure people have just discussed it, but I hadn't seen it. But um, the, the three Skittles bait, she says she sets them on the console, and... He asked her, did you give Hunter one? And she says, no. And he said, did he take one? And she says, I don't know. Well, if she doesn't know if Hunter took one, then yeah. does she know if yeah. if Summer took one? Yeah, I but, mean, but here's the thing. I've already, but you've heard me on the show. I, Hunter and Al, everything at, over there is meaningless. I've actually wiped out that entire it's portion. It's not meaningless. Well, no, to you it isn't. No, to you it isn't. To you it isn't. To you it isn't. If she overdosed I, on nicotine, uh, right, then Hunter's... Okay. Okay, well, if aliens, you know, we don't know if aliens, one thing we don't know for sure is on that drive home, we don't know 100% if an alien spacecraft didn't beam her out of that vehicle into it and take off with it. And the parents were just too scared to admit that. We don't know that, right? I mean, because that's definitely a possibility. Um, Here's the thing is, I think that we wiped out everything prior, and because here we see... Summer in the back of the vehicle. She's sitting there. Even Hunter said she was alive. But then he goes, well, I don't know if she was or not. So why would he admit that she wasn't even alive? See, the story that Allison and Hunter were trying to sell was that maybe she well, wasn't. Well, hold on. Let me, finish, let me not. finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Hunter and um, Allison, they tried to sell the narrative that, hey, something else might have happened. She might not even have been alive or unconscious at that moment. Well, that would be 
telling on themselves if you're saying Hunter's the one that throw, threw her? Why wouldn't it be best for them to say, oh, no, that, she was wide awake on that ride home, right? See, that's the logic I'm trying to get you to do. You see what I'm saying? Why wouldn't well, Hunter... I have a picture of her asleep, so... No, but why wouldn't you say, no, but she was wide awake cause, because as soon as um, Candace said, yes, uh, Summer was awake, she got out of the car, we did some all the stuff, why wouldn't Hunter go, yeah, that is exactly what... Um, that's that's true. Yeah, she was wide awake, too. And then she fell asleep, sure. Because he wouldn't want it to lead back to him whatsoever. Do you get what I'm saying? So Candace is the one that said that when they got home, they unloaded the groceries, they gave some to Grandma, then she did some laundry, and then Summer was hanging out, and she went over here. So that exonerates Hunter and them. Why would they then re-interject a moment where Summer isn't alive... Does closer to their time frame why would they do that if they didn't render a she could have become later on after something happened or after she ingested something while she was in the vehicle okay i get i get what you're saying i mean those are things that people think about but i just gave you like logic that doesn't make any sense like why wouldn't hunter and alice allison jump all over Oh, when, I see what when, you're saying there, but yeah. they, there is, whenever she thought, he's talking about whenever he got out of the vehicle, he says, I think, I think Summer hopped out first and then let me out or, or was, was she next to the door or was I next to the door? He says, I don't know. I wasn't thinking. And Allie says, exactly. Like you're about to screw shit up. Yeah. Right yeah. Here. Yeah. She definitely, well, I know, but because. On another show, Allison wanted to make it seem like, ooh, there was drow dry drowning and all these things. And she wanted to make sure that Hunter was uh, on that same page, going down the same routes, talking about dry drowning. And the other one yes, was the I hot car death bullshit, you know? Mm -hmm. So when, so I here's. I all that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, no, but, but here's the thing. I, but, but here's the thing. So when. But you're saying that, wow, what if Hunter threw her against a tree and she died? Why in the hell would. Candace say, "Oh yeah, she was just doing great." Wouldn't that be a part because of it? I know, I know, but but why? I know, but she said, "I know." You didn't let me finish the sentence, so you just did it again. So why would she say that? And then Hunter, you'd think they'd be all be on the same page at this point, because now we're taking Hunter and Allison out of the picture, because Candace is saying that Summer was completely alive when we got home, everything was great, and Hunter can go, "Phew, wow." Thank you. Instead, he goes, hey, no, wait. Yeah, man, uh, she was, like, passed out at the house. Now we're bringing him back into the picture. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. See, it doesn't make any sense well, logically that they would want to do that. Um, I mean, <laughs> they would want one of them to pay for it, wouldn't they? Who? I mean, you mean Candace or... Or Don. Mm -hmm. But why, though? Oh, yeah, but, but they, it already is in that direction now. See, as soon as Candace has come out in the media and said, no, she was awake, we did gardening and stuff like that. Yeah, that but can, remember... That completely the H exonerates Hunter and Allison at that moment. It, for them, you know, even if they did do whatever you just said, they are completely free now, and they don't need to say another word they wouldn't even need to do an interview they wouldn't need to do but anything you're saying they're all on the same page but i don't feel like anybody really is no i didn't say that i said why wouldn't they be all on the same page oh, why you wouldn't would, they be yeah i mean you would be saying something like um i mean that's what i meant to say i don't know how i worded it but what i'm saying is why wouldn't they be on the same page if that really is what happened that she was thrown up against that tree then then uh or drowned. Why would Candace or then say? I mean, they were looking at their TikTok, so yeah. at some point they were still in the truck. So did she go on ahead? And then they noticed that that she was underwater. He says that he strolled out casually after he threw his shirt down, but how far was it? And he said he didn't know how long she had been under. And yeah. he said that she acted funny, but he thought she was just tired. Yeah, well, what, you know what he said first? She was awake, and then then all of a sudden looks over at Allison, and, and he goes, 
Well, I mean, I couldn't really tell. Yeah. So he just he probably he's wasn't full of crap. paying attention. He was probably texting his girlfriend. He was getting ready to to see her. Yeah. And not paying any know. attention to her. Well, you have a lot of but, like uh, like maybe he was doing this, maybe he was doing that, with no evidence of anything. Well, that's all we have. That we only have what we know. Yeah, but I'm trying to use sentences that people have actually stated. Now, I don't believe any thing that Hunter said, and and actually Hunter never in, implicated that Candace did anything. He just was saying we don't know if she was awake. Is, is saying, I feel like lying is, is saying something. And it makes no sense that, that Don would make these that call or that he would get that text or to, to read yeah. the text. It, it doesn't make... I, I don't feel like... I feel like because she supplied him with alcohol, there was likely drugs there. Um, if there yeah. was SA, I don't know, you know, if there's that. Um, they would lose their stimulus check, their food stamp. They probably get help with their electric, <laughs> yeah. their church family. Hey, Amber, I've tried to say that. that probably help them. Yeah. Every everybody around them. Yeah. Okay. Well. But I, to find well, summer, I got, okay. I, I mean, like you, but here's the thing: you can do we need your. To stop blaming Don for murdering her. Just outright rape and murdering her. Yeah. I don't think that's what happened. Yeah, I don't really know what happened. I think there's a. Like I said, I think it's 80% that it's either Don or Candace or some kind of combination of those. And then 20%, maybe some person that knew the property and abducted her. But I have Don. You know, Don's probably the bigger chunk at this point of that other 80. But I think there's something, maybe something it could be that there was an accident. Uh, one, one thing that makes sense is if one of the kids accidentally, you know, killed summer somehow it's like maybe shoved her down those stairs or whatever and they're like mm -hmm. oh my god oh my god so they're way they're very willing to not say anything at that point the kids don's gonna try to protect them and so and candace is gonna try to protect them because everything would be destroyed they would lose their kids they would um you know i mean just tons of issues there you'd have uh you know so mm -hmm. that that scenario i mean there's no evidence that that happened but that could be something that happened too. So when, you have that one. You, when I say that he threw her against a tree, I just mean that you know how when you're a little kid you get launched into the air and tossed, and maybe he couldn't see all of you know where he was, what was underneath the water because the aerial view you like maps, right? So the aerial view it looks like there's some big flat rocks right underneath the surface of the water, and also that log there. It just looks treacherous. It looks like a place where something could happen. And that water goes up and down. And someone doesn't know how to swim. Don said that. Yeah. If she went out there, ran on ahead of them, and was splashing around and then went under yeah. and it took them a while to yeah. get to her, you just don't know. Yeah, well, that never, I mean, ha that never happened like because... That never happened, though, because Hunter up. said... Hunter said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I threw my towel down and I... Dove in the water and saved her like oh, Hasselhoff. Yeah, I sound like Baywatch. Okay, yeah, Baywatch, right? Yes. But but when you watch the the video, when he went in the water, he just kind of wandered in and well, started splashing her. An island. That was the moment. I don't. Think he hadn't been wet yet. I don't think that's the moment. It is because he wasn't wet that yet. Is the moment. No, it is because uh, he wasn't you wet yet at that point. You can see how long she's under the water. You can see how long she's under the water in the video. He said she didn't know. He didn't know how long she was under the water. Yeah. It might have been four seconds, or it might have been however many. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, That's, I mean, you'd have to listen yeah. to the interview again. But you know, I don't want to quote him, but he did say it could have been four minutes. Well, he it's four, not yeah. four seconds or four minutes. Yeah. Like no, 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 no. He, he didn't say that. A, he said it was just seconds. I'm not saying, no, but hold on. You're you're not correct. You keep just bla throwing out and I'm blabbing. I'm trying to about. correct myself, sir. I know, I know what I'm you're doing, but you're not. That he said yeah. something like that. No, but it wasn't like it that at all. Accurate. He said so it was, was like ten or five or fifteen seconds. It might have been no, he said it was number. like five or fifteen seconds, know. and then he said, and then when Don or when Chris asked him, "Hey, uh, was she uh, hacking?" and he goes, "No, no." And here's the thing: if you inhale water, you are going to cough. Okay, there's no chance. Mm -hmm. So. In the instance where he was Hasselhoff and saved her, she didn't inhale any water at all. He just said, oh, yeah, she went under for like 10 or 15 seconds. Oh, and then I, you know, pulled her out and held her up there. Oh, no, but she didn't cough whatsoever. So don't you think that's true? That, that there's no, 
inhaling of water because you have to cough if you've inhaled water, right? Well, it makes me think that maybe she was raising her arms above her head because she had an injury. I've had my ribs cracked before and it makes you want to raise your hands above your head. Oh yeah. But he did better. but he didn't say, but he said that he tried to imply that she inhaled water, maybe there was a dry drowning event. Remember that? I mean, yeah, I remember uh, Allie saying that the dry, the dry drowning bit, and I don't know that she's not wrong, but there's definitely a cover up of her body. Uh, and if they dropped H off, like they said, then there's <laughs> three people who could potentially know where she's at. And that's what I want to know. Where is she? Yeah. I mean, where is she? If he's so religious that he thinks that God himself is going to come and wake Summer up, then I would think that he would lay her somewhere respectful, uh, a proper burial. I mean, if if that's even possible in this situation. Right. But anyway, thanks for sort of hearing me out. I'm just trying. Well, no, to I'm not. I'm not sort of. I heard your whole. I heard your. Bit. I heard your whole thing. It's okay. We're just battling back and forth. But you know, you gotta let people interject every once in a while. You know, because I don't agree right. with. I just. Uh, I have a I counter have to everything. Finding my words sometimes. That's oh, okay. It's all right. No problem. Well, call in again sometime. Have a we'll, good night. we'll battle Better again. Luck with the next caller. No, but well, no, the call was good. But what we'll do next time is we'll have like an announcer say, "In this corner, it's." Uh, well, what, what's your name? <laughs> By the way, it's Luca. Oh, Luca. Luca Vega. In this corner, it's Luca Vega. In this yep. corner, and then we'll just battle back and forth. It'll be fun. Yeah, let's go to Vegas. <laughs> All right. Thanks for calling in. All right. Bye-bye. Yep. Bye bye. Yeah, I uh, I think I virtually disagree with everything that she was saying, and I factually showed that it's not, you know, it's not very likely whatsoever. But thank you for calling in, Luca Vega. I mean, you know, we could sit here and say all kinds of things are possible, you know. But let's look at the things that are, you know, more likely. Uh, so that's what we're going to try to do on the uh, so mean allegedly channel is go through the timeline in order and just sort of listen and and then play and discuss all of the words that people that matter have said I don't give a shit what Hunter said uh, I do I think it was interesting the comment about they told him that they can't verify Don's information you know, and here's something I think is possible. I think that it's possible that the interview room had has been given sort of this inside information from some source that they found that gives them the luxury of flat out insinuating directly that Don is the main guy, okay? And therefore, you can have a, a, a voice analysis guy that comes on that feels totally safe in uh, talking about every single single word <laughs> that Don said, and it's nefarious somehow. And they feel safe in saying that. And for me, that's sort of cheating, right? Like, I would have liked to see what the analysis would have been had that interview taken place on June 16th. And let's see what the analysis would have been. And I think you should realize that. Because imagine if a psychic was told... Let's just, let's just look at the picture right here. The psychic was told, you know what? Um, before they released it to the media, they said, you know what, I just, we just want to let you know, psychic, that there's a body right behind this church, in the, right behind in the corner back here. That's where we found her. Then she goes on and later and said, you know what? I'm seeing a reservoir. <laughs> okay. I'm seeing a reservoir. And then a Y in, some, in the road. And there's a building that looks like a T almost. Ah, I, I don't know. I don't know, you see. And then a couple days later, oh, look at that. Wow. It looks like a T and there's a Y in the road and we had the whole. 
See, if you already have an answer, then of course it's easy to get really confident about something. Uh, Don's been something that's been interesting to me just from the publicly available information out there. But I can't sit there and tell you that, oh yeah, Don's the guy, you know. He's just, he's somebody that, you know, statistically and based on his prior, his past, is interesting. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I don't know. I don't really, you know, the whole TikTok thing, that just doesn't really matter. Like how long she was on TikTok or... Oh my god. I'm a psychic? Oh. But I think that was a pretty good analogy, right? So if you're given inside of... Here's, here's, the, here's the thing. If they weren't given inside information, because they keep alluding to it, like they'll be talking to somebody, yeah, you, you remember what I told you privately. Yeah, you remember that? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So it sounds like that they're given information. Somebody just collegially talking. Uh, you know, they're, they're providing the, uh, the recordings to law enforcement, so maybe... How about this? Doesn't this sound logical? In the Hunter interview, Hunter says, well, when they were questioning me, they told me that they, they can't verify Don's alibi. Well, doesn't it um, sound like something that could reasonably happen when turning over the audio to law enforcement? He says, yeah, I just have one question. He said this. He said that, Don, you can't verify. Is that true? And they probably go, well, yeah, not at this time. We are still waiting for the ping information. I could definitely see a conversation like that, especially when you're handing them over evidence. They might be a little bit more willing to give you a few nuggets here and there, right? So there you go. So that gives somebody the ability to do four hours of shows on 20 minutes of a Don interview. Like every single freaking word is absolutely bogus. <laughs> Hi, my name is Don. Did you hear the way he said Don? You know, that's the high that he's actually Donald in the records. You know, his, his records out there are all Donald in them. So we got to... Oh, look at it like that. He called himself Don. He's trying to hide it. Because you're going to look up Don, right? And try to find that. It was actually... <laughs> now, when he says Wells, I was really curious about when he said Wells. Is he actually saying that there's a well involved here? No, that's actually just his last name. But still, it's the way he says it. It's the emphasis on well and z. You know, he says z at the end. Come on, you guys. <laughs> oh, Donnelly. I like that one. Yeah. Oh, it is, doesn't it? What's the middle name? Oh, man. Wesley, right? Oh, my God. So it's really Wes. He's tricking everybody. <laughs> oh, good. Well, happy anniversary, D&K Rec. If I can make you laugh, good. Now, to be honest with you, I would love to be a millionaire. No, that's a freaking lie, because you said to be honest with you. There's no way you would have said to be honest with you. No, no, no. You'd like to be a pauper living in a field somewhere, because... Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so what else we got? <laughs> Who's calling in? I know we don't have a lot of people watching, only 206. How many dislikes do we got? How many? Can we get everybody to get hit the like button at least? Um, you know, to try to, let's just balance it out a little bit. Hold on. Hey, thanks, P-Dub. 
I'm tired of it now. Hit the like button. 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 Twenty. Twenty-five. Thirty. Twenty-five. Forty. Forty-five. Fifty. Hit the like button. Twenty. Twenty-five. Thirty. Thirty-five. Forty. Forty-five. Fifty. Twenty. Twenty-five. Thirty. Thirty-five. Now five. I'm thirty-five. So how many do we got? Two hundred. I'm hoping to get like two hundred, if that's possible. Now, how many dislikes is what I'm asking. Dislikes. Thank you for your coverage, Gray. Uh, only 105. Come on, you guys. Get that going. Come on, trolls. It helps my channel out. I just need a little extra. Okay, it's an engagement. I just need you to keep hitting it. That's what's always funny is they think they're hurting you by hitting the dislike button. Uh, YouTube looks at it like, oh, well, they're engaging with it. They had a thought process. Oh, look at that, though. They do have some likes, too. So, you know, it's definitely, they like controversial topics. So people show up over and over again. Thanks, trolls, for helping my channel out. Been a banner month. Been a banner month. Yeah. Well, don't tell them. Yeah, thanks again, uh, P-Dub. She said, thank you for your coverage, Gray. Well, I, thank you. Yeah, I'm trying to, when I talk about the case, I mean, I, you know, I do appreciate when I listen to Chris and those guys talking about some elements of the case and, you know, sort of how they think about things, you know, I appreciate it because it's law enforcement based. It sounds, you know, it's reasonable, makes sense. But it's these, the sensationalistic part of it where, you know, you, you interview Don and then the next day he's just thrown under the bus. Uh, you know, you, you insinuate that Don's in the shed. Even though you were given permission to look in there, you didn't take that opportunity. And then now there's Don's in the shed. And then you have a, a voice analysis guy that comes on. And Don can't say one sentence. Remember how it started off? You know, that sounded pretty sincere. No. See, you, you just said that to pretend that there was a moment that it sounded okay. But then all of a sudden, you realize that the side of the toast, or the side of the bread that you're, whatever, toast your butters on, or whatever the hell the phraseology is, uh, then it's just every single freaking word is a nefarious meaning. Well, I have, well, I have two main theories. The first one is that Candace, something happened to Summer after going downstairs or going back into that house. Then Candace found Summer and was like freaking out and kind of got grandma but the kids were so focused in on their games they weren't paying attention and then grandma said man you're gonna lose these kids because they realized it was a negligence they forgot about summer it was more than three to five minutes it was more like 25 30 minutes and so they she just said you know maybe candy candy this is all just my theory candy told this is and it's all speculation but it's sort of based on what we know it's like if you believe Candace's story, and I'm trying to make it so it's way more, it's a better odds than some random stranger. Because a stranger, in three to five minutes, that's crazy, right? So then uh, Candy tells Candace, hey, you need to go do something to the, you know, take her body and put it somewhere. So Candace drives like 10 minutes away, which is, God, eight miles. Drives down a dirt road somewhere, looks, finds one. Puts her body 50 feet in, gets back in the car, drives back. It'll probably won't be found for months. She drives home though, gets back maybe 30 minutes total, and walks back up to the house. Kids are still playing video games, and then she calls Don. Hey Don, man, something. You know, who, I think she called Don after six is what it sounds like. Uh, originally it was like 5:30, but. They called 911 at 626, so that means their phone call must have been 615-ish. 
So she calls Don. Don drives over there. And Don doesn't know a damn thing about any of it. And all of Candace's story is completely true. <laughs> okay? So every single bit of Candace's story is completely true. And so is Don's. The only thing is, is that Candace leaves out that last part. And it's very easy to just leave something out of a story. Oh man, I went down there and she was just poof gone. Okay, but there was this other stuff that happened in there, okay? Other stuff that happened. In there. Then there was another, uh, another, uh, inst you know, another theory would be that. And I'm, I mean, I'm choosing to believe Candace's story. Yeah, Zozo is one of the people that thinks it's really common, really likely that somebody just ran up there and grabbed her off the property. Okay, yeah, it's possible, but it's just very unlikely. Okay, it, it's just it's you're on top of a hill. <laughs> yeah, she's saying no every time she types two. It's no because she's always so right on all of her theories. It's amazing, every one of them. They're always true. They just you know, the Delphi killer is drooling in a basement, playing video games. Yeah. All right. So the uh, the other story is that the that Don, after Summer went downstairs, Don actually was coming home, and he did something with her. And then he drives down the road, all the way down that same road to where he works, and uh, maybe dispose of her body after doing whatever on that same route that he takes to work, so that, and then he sort of waited around for a phone call to come in from Candace so that he'd be in the area and his phone would ping and it would look like he was over there. So he knew that she'd, he, she would call him after a while when she was missing. So he wasn't really staying there because he thought, well, they are, they're going to spend the day, so I'm going to work late. He could have been saying that so that he could uh, spend... You know, that he was doing something to Summer and then knew that she would call him at some point and then he drove back there later after being called but he'd already had her and that's why the dogs didn't bark and that's why he claims that the dogs weren't in the, uh, you know, even in the area. <laughs> but anyways, I'll have to, I'll send Zozo a hoodie again if it's a a different hoodie, but she'll say, send it to somebody else, Grace, send it to somebody else. If it turns out to be a, uh, a stranger abduction by one of the multiple sex offenders in the area. See, I knew it. She just filled it in right there. She just filled it in. All right, get it, 100 bucks. All right, you got it. 100 bucks, you got it. <laughs> Yeah, Zozo's the living Mary Lou of the chat. That's who she's... Mary Lou's actually designed a little bit after her and, and some other people. That's why she loves Mary Lou so much. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, she always likes me, Gray G. Why are you saying G? That's good. Oh, yeah. See? Kind of like that. Uh... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we're just like a family in here. You know how it goes. Me and LM butt heads every day. Uh, Zozo's always doing something. Making that little squiggly mouth face. Uh, you've got Liver D. I'm missing her super chats. And then she throws me into jail for five minutes. M negative bail. You know how it goes. <laughs> Rest in peace. What? Yeah. And then Jen H is always nice to everybody. Uh, Randy's always nice. Lanky Tor is, and Stacy are really nice. I haven't seen Stacy. Stacy's just been busy at home. I even called her the other day. I was like, hey, where are you? <laughs> yeah. So what do you, that second theory is 
a possibility. Uh, well, let, let me just throw this out there. If it is Don, here's what I'll say. So where where was? Uh, let me go to that case. I got to go to that one. So that's. Uh, hey, the phone lines are open. If you want to call in, by the way. Yep, yeah, I, my house is 71 degrees, but it's like 100 and something outside. This was the area that they had searched originally. But here's Don's route right here, right? Now, I'd, I'd put these pins in places that, um, you know, Don might have pulled in one of these roads here, right? And I even have a... Uh, like right here, there's a water, a bridge right here. Maybe he did something there. Pulled over here, put her there, something like that. And that switch back right there. And I guess he worked right there, and boom. So it is a, the, li the distance here is 21 miles. He said it takes 45 minutes. Uh, it says 37 and 30, but he did say that he could do it in 30 minutes, and that makes sense. I could see that. So 30 minutes means he's hauling ass on these kind of roads. These are really shitty, narrow. I mean, look at this stuff over here. <laughs> hey, don't worry about it, Darlene. I'm just, like, I can just, I, you know, I'm used to filling in, right? <laughs> it's okay when there's 600 people and I and Summer Wells is in the title they know that to come over here to call you know what, what if I change it to oh wait am I buffering right now okay, let me change something here I'll put in uh, Summer Wells call in there we go is that going to change it Let's see what happens Well, it's buffering on my screen over here, for sure. And then he's been on different shows lately. He, he's been on this one channel where he's talking to this man and a woman. I always forget the name of the channel. And he's usually standing in a church parking lot, and he's talking. You know, he apologized for some of his behavior that he's done with some of these various people, the sexual assaults that he's done on the, uh, younger people throughout his life, I guess. Family members. But see, there's a big leap there, though, to then say that he killed Summer. However, one argument you could make that we've talked about, a reason that you might do that, but it just seems such, like such a huge leap to say he'd kill would be that she was about to start school and be out of his control and then you know her her speaking at school the teacher might say is everything okay and then the truth comes out and then Don's in prison and he knows how horrible prison is right so that's a theory that we've talked about before and he knows how horrible prison is he even said it himself I don't think they killed... Yeah. It's just hard to picture him killing her. But maybe he just felt like that was his only out. He didn't want to go back to prison. He won't even punish... Well, they're going to... When they get to that part in the voice analysis, that guy is going to shred... They're going to buy a $1,000 bingo card when Don doesn't say, I want to kill that guy. I'd want him to get the death penalty. I'd want him to... you know. When he doesn't say that and he says, I don't even know if I could send him to prison. Prison's horrible, man. I told you guys this a while ago. That that's going to be a huge thing, right? I couldn't even send him to prison. And then he talks about how horrible prison is. It's just, it's a horrible place to live. So would Don kill his own child to avoid living uh, and going back to prison and being in that environment again. 
Is that possible? Or would he not kill his child and possibly give her to exactly what other people were saying? What what voice was that, Cammy? Did I do did I do an imitation? I think I forgot. So what do you think? What does that one sound like? That one actually makes a little bit of sense to me. Gives you a motive. Uh, he tells you how much he hates prison. If he has been uh, potentially grooming and assaulting his own daughter, and there's evidence that he has assaulted, well, he admits it, assaulting other girls, or at least one he admits to. And let's say he was doing things like that with Summer. And would he do, what would he, what levels would Don go to to avoid being put back in there? What do you guys think of that one? I mean, I think that makes sense, what I was just saying, as a possible theory. Now let me let me do a poll here again. Let's see where we're at. Okay, here we go. All right, there we go. Who is responsible for the disappearance of Summer Wells? Go ahead. There's a a poll question for you. Yeah, well, uh, on that one channel, they he said that they interviewed the co-workers and they said they saw him at a certain time and they saw him again, but, did, but was there any time where they didn't see him for a couple hours? Well, if he's at work, then he's completely... If he has ping information and he's he's been at work all day, his vehicle's at work, uh, there's no other evidence than he's really comes off the radar from them. But I guess they're apparently they're waiting for some data to come in. So we'll see how that goes. But Hunter did say that police said they weren't able to verify his alibi and they would have talked to all those people. But, you know, I'm not saying Hunter is this bastion of truth, but that was one comment he made. That just seemed out of nowhere. And why would he say that? That yes, during the interviews, they told me that must be a true statement. Because he knows that the police would know he was lying. Well, did you hear what I said? Loving life? Jesus. Yeah. Hunter is just a, uh, you know. every The whole story that he was telling about what was going on. Not the whole story, because some of it was just mundane. But he put a bunch of bullshit out there. I'm just saying that would be a weird thing to lie about, knowing that police could say, no, we never told him that. Yeah, got to focus. Yeah. So the poll is a stranger. 37, well, but that doesn't mean... Uh, so it's not really that as crazy as it seems. See, Zozo always looks at that and goes, see, I win, I win, but you don't. The It's actually... 64 to 36. Okay? Nay, folk, look at it like that. It's 64 to 36. Now it's 63 to 37. So 63 pe of the percent of the people believe that it was either Don, Candace, or Grandis. And then 38% think it was a stranger. So you got to look at it like that. Okay, but that's kind of interesting that 
think it was all three of them, though. Which, yeah, it kind of makes sense. I guess I could have added a, a net. I could have added... If I had put the children in there... They're not responsible for her disappearance, though. But maybe one of them pushed her and something happened. He might, because it would mean losing all of his other kids, Nikki. Because everybody was irresponsible at that property. Yeah. Yeah, see, I, I, I kind of agree with that, living, living it. Uh, although I, th I do think, you got to admit, living it, that he, a little quickly, was, oh, I think she's in Mexico. I mean, like, literally two days after. Oh, I, I think she's in Mexico somewhere. I mean, aren't you a little bit more hopeful early on like that? I mean, I guess it's depending on who you are, but. Hunter said Don called. Yeah, he did say that, but neither of them say that now. Wouldn't that have helped? See, here's the thing. Hunter said what exactly what Pinky Lugo just said. Hunter said that that Candace uh, that Don called Candace about a man touching kids at that at the property. But neither Don nor Candace say that's true. But why wouldn't they say that? Why would they go, oh, yeah, 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 that's right, yeah. I mean, it sounds like it would be completely helpful. But it didn't happen. That's why. So you just got to listen to you know, the logic and reasoning of the other people, just like the caller that called in, who was thinking that something happened at the lake, and it was actually Hunter... And then all of a sudden, Candace is saying, oh, yeah, yeah, nope, nope. She was still alive on the way home. And Hunter should just go, phew. Instead, he's like, well, she looked like she was passed out, you know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Why wouldn't they have said that Summer was known... To wander the property. It would have been easier excuse for an accident. Why wouldn't they say that Summer was known? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. That is true. Why wouldn't they say, you know what? We've told her many times to not do it, but occasionally she's wandered off. Right? Occasionally she's wandered. Why wouldn't they say that? But, you know, everybody isn't as conniving and, uh, you know, manipulative. Like, they think of all the little angles all the time like that, I guess. Thank you, Pinky Lugo. So then they're saying, I mean, Candace is really certain that Summer went into the house and then only, you know, three to five minutes later, she's gone. Really certain about that. Yeah, that's right. So they didn't take the out that Hunter gave them. Probably because it's not true and they never mentioned it to law enforcement or anything. And then remember that weird part where Hunter's like, yeah, I grabbed the phones and you know, I quickly went through her deleted stuff. And, I mean, does anybody believe that? God, what a load of crap. What a weird, fanciful story to make up, too. Just... Yeah, so look at, like, this area here, man. Look at that sharp turn. Yeah, right in there. There's a waterway there.
I think that's the church that he goes to. That's where the press conference. This is where the press conference was when the horse ran away. And it was actually right here in the parking lot. And the horse went running down this direction like that. And then here's the property. The, do the, hor the dog path is right over here. Goes down the side to the road. Oh, shit. Who's trying to call in? I don't see anybody on hold or anything. Oh, wait, there's. It didn't make any noise. Hold on, let me fix this thing. Oh, yeah, I didn't have the play sound part because I had to restart it. Okay, hold on. All right, 678. Sorry. 678. Hello. Who's this? Yes, I'm calling to speak. I'm, I'm, I, I'm calling to speak to Mary Lou. What do you mean? I'm not even here. What's going on? I'm, I'm returning your call, Mary Lou. You called about your vehicle. Oh, God. What I couldn't even keep a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Right. <laughs> who, well, who is this, though? Who is this? <laughs> this is Drama Must Remain on the Stage. Oh, yeah? Okay. What's going on? That's it? Or Drama. Oh, okay. It, it's... How, how's it hanging, Gray? Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> yeah. And this is totally sober. Can you imagine? <laughs> oh, man. Wow. That's crazy. But uh, you don't have anything related to the case to talk about? Because I got there was somebody yes. on hold, I think. Yeah, what do you got? What do you got? I do. I, I do. Um, I actually had heard that Chris is donating. To his, to his own... Uh, and some of his profits. Yeah, to where? <laughs> to, to his own well-being. No, seriously. No, he, well, um, he's donating to his, uh, his foundation, right? Yeah. It, Right, I'm sure that that's exactly what it is, but I thought you would find that interesting. Well, it is a, it is a non-profit, so I you know, guess that counts, but that'd be like me creating a, a non <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, well, anyways, I'm going to go, I'm gonna get this other caller about the case, but... All right, well, thank well, you. Thanks, thanks for trying. We almost had a, a funny moment right, well, with Mary Lou. She tried to Tell Mary to Lou we love her. Talk to her later. Okay, thank <laughs> you. Gee. All right, bye. Have a good one. <laughs> <laughs> bye, guys. Bye. Okay. Hello, 423. you got to turn down the audio in the background. Uh, Okie dokie, I'm sorry. How you doing, Gray? Pretty good. Who's this? Uh, this is McKinley from Kingsport. I talked to you a couple more t uh, times uh, oh, yeah? the uh, past couple weeks. But anyway, uh, uh, how you doing, first of all? Not too bad, not too bad. How about yourself? I'm doing good. But anyway, uh, uh, this, uh, this, uh, what do you think about the interviews that uh, this Chris McDonough did with the, uh, uh, you know, uh, the kid and uh, Miss Sally, you know, over here in Kingsport. Yeah, well, you interviewed Hunter, Candace, and Don. I thought the yes, I thought the Candace one was pretty good, other than the part where he, you know, tried to insinuate well, well, no, that Don no, was in no, the No, no, no. I'm saying I'm saying more uh, the uh, the. Uh, the hunter and uh, her, his mom, and yeah. stuff like that. Well, I just thought that one. I don't think he read the room right when he said that there wasn't any um, help for Hunter there. They were they kept giving him little signals and looks for him to change up what he was saying. Yes, sir. Stuff like that, you know. I, I don't think that uh, the TBI and stuff like that. Uh, they want to hear stuff like that. They don't want independent uh, investigators doing stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? 
Well, maybe. I mean, it just kind of depends on how you do it. Because the thing is, is when... They, they like it when they hear them talking to see if it jives with what they told them. And if there's a huge yeah. dis uh, difference... You know, I'm not saying that they're out there saying, Hey, get interviews, get interviews. But they're not going to say, Oh, I mean, if they have a, the ability to listen to it, they're not going to not take that chance because they can actually listen to it and see if it's yeah. the same as what they were told. But I don't think they want, you know, I know I know what you're saying. It's kind of this weird uh, double-edged sword sometimes. Uh, 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 uh. I want to say one thing, sir. I respect you a whole bunch. But uh, the Leslie Earhart thing uh, uh, yesterday about her supposedly that she she's a spokesman for uh, for TBI. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that that I don't know if you've addressed it yet. That uh, but uh, she didn't actually say anything about Chris McDonald and stuff like that. Well, she just said that they're not working with. Any, any, um, you know, anybody like YouTubers. <laughs> so I can't remember the uh, exact no, phrase, no, no, but I saw no, it. I read it. But, 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 but no, uh, Grace, uh, what it was, uh, she, that was all fake. I don't know if you heard about this yet, but, uh, what do you mean it was all fake? I went to her specific Twitter account and saw that her comment. What do you mean? No, no, uh, sir, it was fake. It was somebody that did something that they twisted around and stuff, mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, Leslie Earhart didn't say that she didn't address she didn't say nothing about Chris McDonald and stuff but I don't want to argue with you and stuff. Well, well she didn't Can say his name but he said she said like a general statement uh, no no sir so, wait, so, I, I you, so, you, so you're so you thinking it's all hope, fake uh, you just think it's all fake somebody made a fake Twitter and all this kind of shit they made a fake Twitter I don't want to disagree with you if you sir I respect you a whole bunch and uh <laughs> Okay. Stuff like that. Well, I just don't know. believe in stuff. But, like uh, that. but if you can check into that and stuff, but you, uh, I, I love you, man. Your your factual and stuff like that. But uh, that that was fake Twitter and stuff. Okay, well, send me but, uh, send me an email showing me how it was fake. Well, I I can't because I'm not ah. smart like you. <laughs> oh come on, come on! Gee, you can't do that. You can't do that. <laughs> but uh, there's uh, other <laughs> places, you know. Oh. But anyway, uh, I, w I just wanted to say a few things. Yeah. I was surprised that y'all were back on here with uh, someone else and stuff. I, well, no, we glad just... Y'all were sticking with well, we did. Stuff. Well, we did two hours of another case, and then I opened up the lines, and there we go. Back to Summer Wells again. I guess it's, you know, that's the case everybody's interested in at this point. Well, let me tell you something, buddy. You got me interested in stuff. Uh before this happened around here in Kingsport, I had the heebie-jeebies about any kids getting hurt, so I didn't want even... I would never even read it in the papers or listen on the news. I just uh, ignored it and stuff, but uh, I, I started watching it somewhere else. Stuff. So I, I started... Uh, now I'm looking at other stuff and stuff. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So you live in Kingsport but, uh, where, they, where, they, where Hunter lives. Yes, sir. That yeah. dumb ass. <laughs> but uh, yeah. it, that, don't listen to nothing them, them people say over there. I don't know them, but I guarantee you, I don't have to be no daggone uh, detective to know that they're full of shit. Yeah. Well, I hate to say that. Well, but, there's a lot of know. stuff that he said that was provably not true. So once you have one right. thing, you can just discount everything. Because that means that they right. really didn't give a shit. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm I'm leaning towards believing the comment that he made about when he was being interviewed. They told him that they they weren't able to verify Don's alibi. I could see that being part of a ploy to get him to say something in an interview. And then he, why would he say something if he knew it wasn't true? That law enforcement would go, "That's a lie," you know. So I think yeah. that's something that's Same definitely lie. a possibility. But again, he could be lying there too. We just don't know. I think you're bull crap. I mean, them. I'm just talking about them people. Yeah. But I, I just, hey, can I ask you, Gray? I told you I had the dumbest. I told you last week that I had the dumbest, uh, or a few days ago, I had the dumbest theory 
that she could be lost in the woods. I know you told us that you're like 80-20. I've heard your theory and stuff. Yeah. But uh, how dumb is my theory that she just got lost in woods and got eaten up by kids? I mean, not kids, but, but wolves, not wolves. Well, whatever. No, whatever. I know what you're saying. Yep. It's, I don't think it's, I don't think it's ludicrous because we've seen stories where somebody walks off and they fall into like a hole or some weird thing. But the only problem is, is they say that she definitely wouldn't have left the property. So I know, it makes but, you think that maybe you know, she really wouldn't do that. And why would they not leave that door open to be a possibility? I don't know. I don't know, sir. Can I say one more thing? Sure. Uh, here in Kingsport, uh, we got one area called Bear Town. It's across the mountain from where they are at. Uh-huh. But it's in here right here in Kingsport City Limits. A two-year-old toddler, about four or five, maybe six or seven years ago, a two-year-old toddler walked through the dense woods, walked two miles, and walked into a rock where he got killed. You felt it. Little kid just felt it to death. Yeah. And, uh, of course, the parents were not uh, charged or nothing like that. You can look it up, you know. I think it might be eight or ten years ago. But they found but, uh, the kid pretty easily, years. though, right? I mean, where, where's where's Summer, though? They've looked everywhere. Say that. They've had Please hundreds. Please say that again. Well, but, but they found that kid. But where's Summer, right? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a, but what? I don't know. It seems like she'd have to, over here, there's this big open space, but they check there. Then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, hey, uh, who, who are you from? I, I, you're from Oregon, right? Yeah. Got oh, a lot of woods yeah. over here. A lot of woods, so you just like Tennessee. Of course, Tennessee's a lot of hillier and stuff. Well, yours a lot but, thicker. Uh, we have, like, pine trees and deciduous I'd, I'd like to welcome you up here in uh, Kingsport right now. <laughs> I mean, if you could fly a plane tonight. <laughs> yeah. It's it's so dense. Let me tell you something, uh, uh, Gray. I live in a city mm-hmm. here in Kingsport. Yeah, pretty dense. I own a lot. I own one lot. Uh, all the houses are close. We are, a lot of people have that. Like uh, woods in the back of their house, I got, I got a set of woods in the back of my house. I lived here fifteen and a half years. I've never been that back of that woods. Mm-hmm. It's over a bluff and it's just pure woods. If a kid was back there, I would never see it. What I'm telling you is, well, first of all, I'm saying I'm probably a dummy, but uh, but uh, it's. Yeah, it's it's not the same. What I'm love, trying to say, like loving uh, loving life, it's not the same kind of dense woods. This stuff here, you can barely walk through it. In Oregon, you can you, you, could, you, you can walk you through could walk the woods. Through my my backwoods, so uh, great. It's tough though. Like the well, the yeah, woods well, that Summer went missing from. The only way you can get through is if there's a path already. The rest of it, I mean, you saw that when he went down that path, right? It was really yeah. just dense. You almost need a machete to get through that. Yeah, we ours is different. It's dense, but you can easily just walk in a direction if you want to. You're not stuck somewhere. But anyways, so to you think, uh, what do you think? I'm sorry, but what do you think? Am my my dumbass theory that she got lost in the woods and uh, died? And, uh, well, I mean, uh, what, it's what's not your very li- well. Well, I, would, well, I wouldn't say it's very likely. Maybe five. You know, two percent of the, you know, the other t- twenty. I mean, I wouldn't even say two percent. I mean, they've looked everywhere up there. They had like professionals looking in a huge radius up there. That I think it was something like the circle that I have right here is what I put up after they set it. So this whole huge area here, and I don't know. It just seems like somebody would have seen her. She would have ran into a house at some point early on. Maybe. I don't know. I just don't think it's very good odds. But, hey, there's a chance, right? Yes, sir. Hey, Gray, listen, though. Uh, we had another kid got 
uh, uh, missing uh, like a, a year and a half before that. I yeah. forget what her name was. You may have heard of it. She was just like a year and a half old. Which her mother, they thank God her, she arrested herself. Uh, hmm. uh, Kaylee and I, uh, not Kaylee and Smith. But anyway, uh, <laughs> they had searched yeah. the whole area uh, up here in Kingsport, Southern County. And uh, they had searched a building on her, on the, this lady. Uh, her, her kid had died, or, you know, she was killing herself. They'd searched a building and stuff. Yeah. And uh, they yeah. missed her. And then later on, they, they researched and found a little kid yes. in that building. Well, somebody loving building. Uh, no, her, Monk, who said that? Yeah, Steve Kellogg said uh, Boswell. It's the Boswell case. But I got to get these other calls. Boswell, yes, sir. Yeah, so that was, oh, I'm sorry. wasn't I'm too sorry. far away from there. Pretty close. So I'm sorry. You never know. You never know. But hey, uh, thank I'll, you, I'll give you a percentage. One, two percent. One percent. Okay. <laughs> All right. Have a good one, man. Thank you, Bob. Bye-bye. Three, six, zero. Uh, hello, Gray. How are you doing? Pretty good. Who's this? This is Nay Folk. Nay Folk. All right. What's going on? Yes. It's good. It's interesting that he called before me because at the beginning, this really kind of reminded me of uh, Allison Watterson. Oh, that, yeah? yeah? That maybe, yeah, maybe they couldn't find her in the woods, but the more that the family opens their mouth, it's odd that they push abduction when yeah. they could just say she got lost in the woods yeah it's almost like subconsciously they know she's nowhere around there so but are implying another action instead of their own of why she's not there i right? totally agree yeah. totally agree the first couple weeks of this case i really thought man she's probably out in the woods and they won't find her until next spring but then the family just kept talking and talking, and it's it's very odd. Unless very they're odd. completely telling the truth, right? I mean, yeah. And tell the, yeah, unless they're telling the truth. Yeah, that's what's weird. If they're telling uh, the truth, then it's like, man, it actually makes sense. Uh, yeah, but because people don't believe Don could be a, yeah, yeah, because Don could be a complete, you know, horrible person in a ton of different ways, but not kill his his daughter. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, that is interesting. That's a pretty good. That's a pretty good comparison. I mean, perhaps because Allison Watterson was an adult, and she was. They they searched everywhere. Remember all that searching they were doing? They had all these people out there. So long. And they were using professionals searching for months and months, and then they find her, not too far away, really, from the original spot, in dense woods, with blackberry bushes and. Things like that. Just curled up Just curled underneath. In, yeah. yeah. And she you know, she was only bones, unfortunately, at that point. But it yeah. shows you that like and she was an adult, so what about a little kid? Maybe I guess that is possible, right? Yeah, summer's just so tiny to begin with that it, 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 it that's just a lot of woods. So I just hmm. Yeah. I just wanted to call and put my two cents in. Because she might have curled so. up. Let's say it, they didn't find her that night and it was getting late and she curled up under something to stay warm. Mm -hmm. Well, how would you find mm -hmm. her? And she, let's say she dies overnight for some reason. Maybe it got, yep. uh, I mean, I don't know how cold it gets out at night or whatever, but something happened and and she just, they haven't found her. I mean, that's, sort of, yeah. so maybe we'll yeah. give that last caller a little, we'll give about 2%. <laughs> yeah, maybe you, you know, and, and maybe the parents are acting this way because of all the social media. Like, I'd really like to wonder what they originally told police, because if the police really seemed to think she had wandered off originally, you know. So why did they think that? If the, if the parents were saying abduction, abduction, abduction the whole time, you'd think they'd be... Yeah. Be not wandering. So See, it's almost weird. It's almost like her. they're aware that she was taken off the property, but they're assigning blame to an abduction other than what really might have happened. Right? Yes. 
That's what it does feel yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I would say if yeah. Candace knows and she hasn't said anything yet, then it's not Dawn doing something really. I think she would easily just turn Dawn in. She He'd be out of her face for the rest of his life. And But he's also the breadwinner deal, uh, mm-hmm. you know, in the, at the house. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's keeping her from saying something. But it was Dawn. I don't know. It, it, it is. It's really yeah. complicated. There's so much stuff going on. It's hard to really know. And then Grandma just just leaving. Sounds like she doesn't want to talk to anybody. It's just yeah, like she left and she apparently had some medical you know, people with medical issues. But would you really leave your your granddaughters, your you know your granddaughter missing granddaughter? Missing, yeah, it's just crazy, right? Like she's missing and yeah, you take off to go take care of some seventy year old person that's sick or something. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. That just More seems a little than your granddaughter. strange. Yeah, it does seem a little odd. She was around Convenient. for a month, though. So I mean, before she left, it wasn't like she left right mm-hmm. away. So you could look at it like that, where she was here for a long time. And uh, man, I just wish she would have had at least one interview with somebody somewhere. I wanna, yeah, say something. I want to hear what her version yeah. of that same story is. She was right there. Yeah. Yeah, and I also want to know why the dispatch thought that Candace was on a walk. Like, where did the walk come from? Well, I, I just think. Walk? Well, I think that could be a uh, just the telephone game thing where she she might have said, "Yeah, I was out walking looking for her, and I just couldn't." You know, and they, oh yeah, she's walking. I I don't know. It just that just seems yeah. like an error somewhere. Doesn't even make Somewhere any sense. Doesn't even really make any sense. Do you think? Does it look like? I mean, I'm just saying, Candace isn't really going on walks. It looks like she walks. Yeah. yeah. Well, it doesn't look like that's yeah. what she does. She's not like a walker. She seems like somebody that sits around and chit chats and you know does some work around the house or something. TikTok. Like <laughs> but she's not really somebody that's going to go on an exercise walk. You know, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. She, she just doesn't do it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Geez, I wonder if Don, if that came from Don when he called 911. You know, maybe he just didn't want to make it sound like Candace wasn't paying attention and said, oh, she was out, you know, on a walk and she came back and couldn't find Summer. Yeah. I guess oh. there was one. You know, it's funny. Uh, Kelly said there is a grandma interview. I do kind of remember her saying something, but it doesn't seem like it's very long and doesn't have a lot of details in it. I think I do remember yeah, something. I can't. I can't remember if it was just audio that I heard, or was she on one of those? She was on a video uh, on a channel, but she was just sitting in the background, or something like that. There's so much God. information that is coming out of this case. It's, yeah. That's why I think there's so much attention on it. It's yeah. All huh. right. Well. All right. Well, I'll <laughs> let you go so you can answer more calls. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks for calling in. Nay, yeah, folk. you have a good night, Greg. Hey, thanks for supporting the channel. Bye-bye. Too. Appreciate it. All right, bye bye. Have a good one. Yeah, I love the channel. Thank <laughs> you, Greg. All right, thanks. Bye. All right, bye bye. Uh, okay, four six nine. Hello. Greg. Yep. Yep. Hi, Gray. Honestly, I just called in. <laughs> I'm messing with you. All right, so oh. I was calling in to discuss. I didn't know what your feeling was. Oh, were you um, the one that just called in? Okay, because there was another one waiting, and I forgot to. I didn't know which one you called in first. Yeah, I had called in actually a few times, and I hung up because I didn't know if I was doing it right. Uh, Do you want to take the other caller first? Or is someone else well, waiting? I, well, is yours a long one, or is it? Okay, well, I, I won't keep... Well, no, you can just do it. I just want to know. What, you know, usually when somebody oh, says sorry. that, well, hey, when you get back to me, boy, you better get out a cup of coffee and a bag of popcorn because yeah. this sucker's going to... I'm not even... I'm all too right. calm for all that. All right, well, go all ahead. All right, so what are your feelings on... I mean, obviously, with this being all spread out in the media, I mean, if they ever do catch whoever did this, whether that be the parents or, you know, relatives or neighbors... Mm-hmm. What's the odds that they'll have a fair trial? Uh, I mean, it would be hard to find one in that area. 
Yeah. It really would be. Yeah. It, I really feel that way as well. But believe it or not, this case isn't a big case na- nationwide. It's a, it's a a YouTube Facebook phenomenon. There's nothing. Nobody's right. even, and maybe a couple places like Inside Edition or whatever. But it's just not really that big. I just don't remember cases being tried like this. I'm an older. I'm older. Like I'm full, I'm in my 40s. So I I thought that things like this, like you weren't supposed to discuss cases, mm-hmm. like out loud. I mean, wasn't that how it was back in the day, or am I missing something? Well, people can. Uh, I mean, yeah, everybody's always had news channels where they talk about cases. And, you know. Yeah, but I don't think it's as they don't talk as about it, it today. And I'm not saying it's wrong. It's definitely not wrong because there's a lot of like very smart, intelligent people more so that should be in professions more so than people that are actually in those professions. You know, like everyday average people solve cases. So yeah, I, mean, I don't know. All right, that was it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. Because I don't want to keep you, and I can call back in again. I just, I oh. was, just well, had a few things to say. Well, did you have something? One, another thing, or um, is there? How many people are waiting? I don't want. I seriously don't want to hold the line up. I feel like I'm in school, like at the water fountain. <laughs> no, there's only, there's no, there's one person on hold here. So go ahead. What's one of your right. other thoughts? Well, I I really don't have any take on the case because I always like to keep a uh, you know an open mind about what it is that's going on because details are probably a lot of things that we're not seeing you know as, as the public so yeah i mean we always um, say if, that, if, if we had the ping um, information we'd all be able to make better inferences yeah. right like we know right we don't have it yeah that's i did want to actually say that say something about that they have the geofencing they have the ability to do, to do the geofencing um i live here in texas so there was a, a murder down down the way in um, it happened at a church, and they actually did the geofencing. Now, I do know out where they live, there may not be that capability. Like, I don't know if Google, because I think if they actually ordered it through, Google does it, right, the geofencing. So I don't know if they have the capability to do that out where they live. Are you aware? Or you don't know? Well, I'm I, sure I, they have cell towers, right? Well, I mean, they, yeah, they just do pings and the uh, Wi-Fis, mm-hmm. and, you know, they just know where everybody is. Well, I guess I heard that they brought in those really small little, like, antennas as opposed to, like, well, I'm sure they have the towers, but I I thought that they had said that initially when they first come in, just to make sure the communication's clear, they brought in the smaller mm-hmm. antennas. I don't know if that, well, I don't know if that really happened or if it was just like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. My dog's on my lap and he's really happy. Oh, he likes my voice, I bet. I bet. Maybe that's what it is. I think that's it. I think it is. I can't <laughs> see. I, cause I, I know you can't listen while you're on here. but All right. Well, I'm going to go because I don't want who's ever behind me to get upset. Okay. But well, thanks well, for taking my call. Yeah, well, thanks for calling you. in. Thanks for calling in. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. All right. Thank you. Up oh, seven two four, you're on. You gotta mute. You gotta mute your audio in the background. Okay. Yeah. What's going on? It's muted. That's who? My RTO is muted. Who's muted? It said I had to mute my audio. Okay. Are you gonna? Do you have anything to say, or are you just gonna keep talking? Yes, about absolutely. That? Okay. What do you got? Oh, um, what do you got? <clears throat> okay. As far as, I don't know what freaking case you're even on right now, but uh, but the summer. Okay, well, if you don't know what case, I'm going to get rid of you. Jeez. All right, what do we got on this one here? Let's see. Four, two, three, you're on. Hey, uh, it's just me, McKinley, here back from Kingsport. Again? Uh, What's going yes, on? sir. Yes, sir, I'm sorry. But I checked. And Leslie Earhart never did say that, sir. I respect you. You're my favorite uh, YouTuber. Okay, well, I know, but send me an email with it, okay? I don't know how to do that. But, uh, but she didn't, she didn't say that. But, uh, can you check into that? Yeah, maybe, maybe I will, but I don't, I'm not sure why you need to call in again to tell me it. 
Where was y'all at? Nobody else is. Well, there was. I was. But anyway, I love you. I love you. You're you're my (laughs) favorite YouTuber. Okay. All right. Thanks, man. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. The other call, I just said, "Yeah." Hey, I don't even know what you're talking about, or what what case you're talking about, or well, why am I going to take that call? Are you joking? Man, what what good is this going to be? I mean, have a purpose when you're calling in, right? Doesn't that make sense, everybody? Can I get an amen? Man, that's wild. Yeah, so you, did you just send me an email? What did you just send me, Georgina? Let me check it out. What do you got? Is this a Facebook? Yeah, I can't play other videos on YouTube. And I hope it's not the same one that I've already seen a hundred times. No, the video is not. You can't watch it. It's private. So, you just sent me a video that's private, Georgina. Ah, boy. Here we go again. Here we go. Hello. Hello. What's going on? Gray. I'm so sorry about that confusion, the last phone call. Well, I wasn't confused. You didn't know what you were calling in about. I mean, the case that I was referring to, you guys are talking about. I know, but normally when people call in, they know what they're going to be talking about, not like, I don't know what we're talking about. Okay, I do exactly know what I want to talk about. Okay, what did you want to talk about? I would like to talk about um, Cherry Mayhem. Years ago, I know you did a um, series on that. It was a young child. She was five years old, got taken off the bus stop in Pennsylvania, uh, and, and it just seems so familiar whenever this case with um, Summer has broken my heart because it reminds me so much of that same case. Yeah. It's it's incredible. But you sound a lot like and, the guy. You sound like a lot monkey, like the guy the that, monkey bo- the, You sound a lot like the guy that calls in on the uh, Delphi nights. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what he was talking about, monkeys. Uh, I got had to get rid of him there. Hey, Blue. How's it going, buddy? Oh, go get him, buddy. <laughs> Blue's starting to feel better now, I can tell. I think he needs to go outside. Hold on a second. Go outside? Yeah, there you go. See, nothing. Viewer activity, nothing. All right, hold on. Uh, Let me see if I... Oh, he had an infection, little bump on his butt that was an infection. I don't know. That that sounds like the Godzi guy. Same voice, everything. Started talking about monkeys, and you could tell they were about to say something stupid. Yeah. Yep. The see all button still doesn't work. Everybody, still doesn't work. So I used to like to shout out everybody at the end of the show who's contributed on super chats. So what was that last poll? Let's see, what did it say? Unfortunately, it, they YouTube hasn't fixed it. They did say it was a bug on their end. So, so who is responsible for the disappearance of Summer Wells? Stranger, 36%. And then there's 64% is a combination of either Don, Candace. So we're close to my 80-20 deal on that one. 
What am I supposed to do, Lee D? I, I can't fix it. So. You know, making sad faces doesn't help fix it. It just, it is what it is. But it sucks because I like to do that. Yeah, what am I supposed to do now? That's all I ever did. Yeah, that's true. That's all John Boy had to offer. Poor guy. All right, guys, I'm gonna get out of here, and uh, I don't. I'm, I don't even think I'm gonna do the thing at the end. I'm three hours and forty-seven minutes. Okay, I need to relax a little bit. It's been a stressful evening. A lot of weirdness going on, but. Thank you all the moderators out there, and let's try to, you know, let people have weird comments. I'll be the one that re removes them or says something. Uh, just, you don't even have to roll your eyes or anything. Just look at it and go, oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, maybe that's it. Well, tomorrow's Friday the 13th. So maybe where you live it is, but not where I live. <laughs> Yeah, but thank you everybody who called in too. I appreciate it. Even the trolls. Thanks. And there's Zozo doing the eye roll because somebody said you don't have to do that. Oh boy. All right. Well, thank you guys very much for showing up tonight. Really appreciate it. Uh, doing doing well this month for the channel and the end of the month. So we'll be donating again probably in the next couple days. I'm thinking of donating to Rain next time. Well, thank you guys. Wow. So kind. <laughs> uh, probably Rain and their uh, organization's Violence Against Women. And they also do backlog testing of rape kits. So that's good. And, uh, yeah, so everybody, thank you guys very, very much. And we will see you guys to tomorrow, all right? So, as I always say, everybody, until next time. Oh, wait, don't forget, we might be doing, if Chasing Truth isn't sick in the morning, at 11 my time, 2 o'clock East Coast time, we'll try to do our first live on that other, on uh, So Mean, allegedly, all right? So we'll see you guys tomorrow, and as I always say, until next time, be safe out there. Ooh, man, I almost hit the stop streaming button. <laughs> I was this close. Yeah, I've been doing this true crime thing for quite a while now. And during this whole time, I have not seen one person that is a crime dissector. I'm a certified human lie detector. Gonna get ya. What a stretcher if you try and play me like an old projector. Crime sector is my nectar. Professor Grey is gonna give another lecture. Crime collector, freak connector. And I'm always gonna be a pup protector. Fool deflector, interceptor. And I'm meaner than a specter with a vector. On this pector, we'll all respect ya. Just remember, I've a temple fucking check ya. I have no agenda, I'm the pretender And I'll serve it to you straight without the blender And in the end, I'm gonna send ya On a mission to reveal the true offender Yeah, so I'll just get right back to work Alright everybody, Thank you. Good night everybody, gee, I wanted to rap Well, it's 3 hours and 45 minutes, I'm pretty tired Okay, well, maybe next time then, gee. <laughs> Poor Mary Lou. She's so put upon. All right, everybody. Be safe out there.